But yeah, we're watching this uh, video, this uh, up and coming YouTuber created. And was like, you know what? I'll check it out. It has to do with Mega Man. I figure why not, right? <laughs> That's a joke. Uh, it's made for my good buddy, good friend, uh, Shotterock. Made a very objective, very, uh, um, uh, what is the opposite of Doomer? Whatever that word is, that's the word. Um, it was it was, a, it was much more um, objective take to it. It was much more. Um, it was. It had a lot of logic and reason to it that a lot of people can resonate, myself included, because uh, we are uh, we we do think quite alike. But I am kind of curious because I was actually watching it, and we'll see if I truly truly do feel. Like I fully uh, agree with the video or not. So as always, um, I didn't take timestamps this time around because I didn't use my last timestamps. But um, I am gonna pause it like every once in a while and then just comment on it as always. And yeah, uh, I'll do full screen. Yeah, I'll do full screen. Alrighty, I will let it play now. Oh, wait, put it loud and then I'll lower it whenever I, if I need to. It's 2024, and we recently passed the 36th anniversary of the Mega Man franchise and the 5th anniversary of Mega Man 11 without much of the fanfare that fans were hoping for. Now, 2023 wasn't a nothing year, mind you. We got new releases in the form of Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection with online net battles to boot, and it was also the 3rd anniversary of Rockman X Dot. It shocks me to this day that this game went three years, considering, um, just how shoddy it was towards the end. Like, my god. Kind of insane to think about. And even funnier that, uh, our, our, our favorite developers of all time, Nebula Joy, is like, hey guys, hey Capcom. <laughs> Let's continue, uh, let's continue global, shall we? <laughs> so, that's cool. Um, I don't know if anything came from that. I'm gonna assume they were met with a hell no, but we'll see. Last year did see the death of the Capcom handled versions of the mobile and PC title, but from the ashes came Mega Man X. Also, I kind of do want to point out, all right? Oh my god, like, talk about introducing a type of unit that's meant to be so broken, and then be like, hey guys, let's break it even harder, and it hasn't even been that long yet. Actually insanity. ...of the mobile NPC title... But from the ashes came Mega Man X Dive Offline, an unprecedented release in the world of live service gacha titles that will preserve a good chunk of the single player content for years to come, with even more restorations being done by the modding community that is still booming despite Capcom adding the Enigma DRM to their library of PC games. Oh yeah, can't forget- I also want to point out as well that yeah, they're still going strong with these mods. Like, um, they teased one. I forgot what it was. Oh, God. Uh, but I, I know that there was one thing that was teased very recently. And then they also added a Digimon. Because fuck it, why not? Get things like the Minecraft Mega Man X crossover, among other crossovers like Compass, either. That did kind of happen out of nowhere. It's safe to say that Answer players needs. still had Mega Man content to enjoy last year. By the way, the only reason why I, I am reminded of this game is, uh, <laughs> thanks to Mega Quint. Which, it's not a bad thing by any means. It's very cool and interesting that they are, uh, that they're just random collabs with Mega Man. So, yeah, I, I tend to see, like, clips of Compass, and I think even just recently... Uh, the Metabots game uh, had another one with uh, with Mega Man, so there's like a whole slew of new armors and whatnot. So yeah, 
Um, to answer your question, Neeps, how far did I go on SR's video? Well, if you see the time code right in the bottom right there, uh, I barely began. <laughs> but if you're asking overall if I've seen the video, I have seen the video in its entirety. In fact, I even watched it again today to refresh myself just to make sure I didn't miss anything. So that, if that answers your question, cool. Between the blast from the 2000s and the world of the deep log. I thought However, this was Dragalia, man. Oh my god. Diehard fans from wondering if Capcom will ever announce another original Mega Man title in the vein of Mega Man 12, Mega Man X9, and lots more. What happened to all the sequels or anything brand new for that matter? Does Capcom hate Mega? You just reminded me. It was Vent. I believe it was I believe his name is Vent. It's, it's the it's the male counterpart to ash or was it great i don't even oh god i don't even know man i don't know these names but it's i, I believe it's the other person of zxa that's not ash mega man in this special episode of mega news we take a deep dive into the state of the mega man franchise in early 2024 how we got here and what could be still ahead of us let's rock Hey, somebody rang the doorbell. I'll be right back. I'm gonna check out to see who it is. Okay, I'm back. It was a uh, food delivery, but it was not for me. Welcome back to Mega Nuke. I think that's more of a statement. Not really a question, but all right. The show where I ramble off about the goings on in the Mega Man fandom. First of all, to our viewers, thank you so much for waiting on what will be the debut episode of 2024. To reward your patience, I have a special show for you today, where, at the request of some of you I've talked to, I am finally going to compile my take on the state of the franchise as it stands today. We'll hit upon some relevant news topics on my bucket list as we go too. A quick disclaimer before we begin. I know, I know, the number one question I'm going to be asked right off the bat is about the open letter to Capcom video. So allow me to clear the air. As of this current moment, I am not affiliated in any capacity with the video's creator. I also haven't watched anything from their channel in years. Hey, Simaker. Welcome back, John. And, uh, but you said the real question. That's why it's, you know, gotta, gotta clarify better, mister. Quite frankly, so I am not in a place where I can comment on it. I do apologize about that. But yeah, this isn't a response to anyone specific. I'm just going to address some sentiments that I've seen out there on the net and do my best to provide some context using what knowledge I've accumulated throughout my years in this fandom. Not to come to the defense of anyone per se, but just to be reasonable because while it's really easy to let your emotions get the better of you in these trying times, I think it's also important for us to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Bear in mind that this is only in my opinion based on the best educated guesses that I can muster, and it's not to be taken as gospel. Alright then, let's set the stage. So yeah, he's gonna go over uh, his points. I do not believe he even watched that video, so none of none of his points are gonna go through that video regardless, so... Although I did, so uh, it might influence it, but I don't know. But um, yeah, so... And the, to, to preface this, we kind of do think alike. We we, ha we do share a lot of common opinions, but there are some things that even he and I don't agree with. So, um, yeah. Well, but we'll see. We will see. What is it, Neeps? What is the problem? 
We are three minutes and 42 seconds in, and we have a problem. What's the problem? Yeah, at the moment, I don't, I don't really see much of anything with the, with the video as of yet, so. Uh, I covered his video by what? What are you talking about? I'm also going to mention this as well. I, I think I know we're going to go with this. But, um... Uh, but I'll let you finish your points. Um, I might be associated and work with Shadow Rock. But keep in mind, he and I are separate people. I am here making my own stuff. That is why I've been grinding a lot more with my stuff. So it was my choice of uh, covering this video. And, um, and, uh, and yeah, like, yes, this, I, I, and as I mentioned before, this is like a much more objective, not doomer pilled video compared to Revo's. Revo's was more, it was very, uh, negative and very worried and very doomer pilled. And, um, I know, I know this, but, and like I said, we think alike, he and I, but there are even some things I am not fully agree with, but we'll get to that. Thank you, Mr. Narrator. From about 2010 to 2018, the Mega Man franchise suffered an unprecedented hiatus that has been coined the Dark Ages. Series producer at the time, Keiji Inafune, left Capcom, games were cancelled, shots were taken, fans got their feelings and trust in oh. Capcom destroyed, and aside from 2012's Rock Band crossover that... I have a legitimate question. A fully legitimate question about this game, because I've never played this game. Is it worth it? Like, do I even... Actually, I don't even think it's available at all, but it's like... Like, how bad was it? Like, all, all I hear is that this game was dog shit, but it's like, I've never played it. I mean, it looks kind of funky, but it's like, is it really that bad? <laughs> it's like I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, they, they didn't port over to the states, which, is, which I found very funny. <laughs> so I was like, "Damn, was this game really?" Because I didn't, I didn't really address this very much in in the other video. I was like, "Shit, was it that bad?" I, I'll be real though. Like the 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 outfit design here. Oh, you can't see the mouse, but uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's a that's a choice. If I do say so myself with the fur. I feel 50 50 on it. Uh, I think I think somebody had put I think it was midnight. He had posted uh he either posted it or reposted it. It was uh Proto Man's design and it was like, huh. That's interesting. A lot of a lot of emblems on him, but yeah. It wasn't received well by the community to say the least, to the point that Capcom of America was like, uh yeah, we're not even gonna bother with this one. Eventually, we did get 2015's Mega okay. Man Legacy Collection and 2017's Mega Man Legacy Collection 2, but outside of those, there were no substantial original titles released during this time. And we thought the Blue Ah, uh, yes, the dead, drought. <laughs> to fade any dormant IP suffer, becoming a merchandising mill thriving off of nostalgia. That was until that fateful December of 2017. When Capcom hosted a 30th anniversary live stream, not this only announcing a Mega Man X Legacy collection, but revealing to the world Mega Man 11, the first new entry in the classic series in eight years that took the 2D jumping and shooting action into the modern era with a new art style, quality of life improvements, a new double gear system mechanic, and an unprecedented amount of difficulty options for newcomers and veterans alike. People are going to have their opinions about certain aspects, but for me personally, Mega Man 11 was a very solid return to form, and it's definitely among my top 3 favorite classic series games. All I could really ask for was a longer Wily Castle. It was also at this time that we were- Yeah, I'm not, I won't lie to you, I'm not a classic person by 
much means, but it definitely was one hell of a solid game. It's it's not even just the fact that it was like it, it like it took so long to come here. But it, it's just like all those years to get this game, and it, it may have not been like that spectacular ten out of ten game, but it was pretty fucking good. Like it was amazing. Um, so. Like, I can't deny it. It's like, Eleven's a damn good game. Uh, hey, Major John, how you doing? Oh, no, no problem, Major John. Uh, as, as the other video, this will be uploaded separately. Uh, so that way you can view it at your own lovely pleasure. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but thanks for stopping by from work. It means a lot. Um, but yeah, uh... This I I will definitely say to Eleven is like a very good game to get people into Mega Man. Like, uh, like I know classic. Like you, you can pay, basically have them play any classic. But if you want them to play like the classic game to pe for people to get that feel of Mega Man, it is one hundred percent Eleven. Easy peasy. We're introduced to director Koji Oda and the new series producer Kazuhiro Tsuchiya. That would step into Inafune's old role. Right out the gate, they had a vision to revitalize the Mega Man brand over the following 10 years or more, and their enthusiasm for a new era of the Blue Bomber was kind of infectious. They even said that they would not deny other Mega Man subseries their chance to shine, so hooray! Deep down, people are not going to soon forget the Dark Age period the fandom suffered through. Yeah, no one, we're not forgetting that at all, man. Are you kidding me? Like, no one's gonna forget, bro. There was no games for like eight years, man. Um, and yeah, to address that Easter egg, yeah, it's like, I mean, I don't blame people for denying it. It's like, it's like you're bringing out these collections of, of like these games uh, that people are calling lazy, by the way, and then all of a sudden there's just like this new piece of art that's like it looks so modern, so weird and different compared to the other things that 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 was presented. And it's like. This is some fake shit, bro. This is this is like I don't know, man. I mean that that that's how it was. Like that that like that's how, like I, I mean to be perfectly fair, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Let, let's just say even if if there wasn't that giant drought of games or anything like that, let's just say Mega Man was going consistently, like at a decent rate. I still wouldn't like think much of it. I I would be like, oh, that looks interesting. Oh, yeah, I guess. And I don't think we should ever forget. But for a while. The future was beginning to look bright again when the Mega Man X Legacy Collection sold well enough to please Capcom, and Mega Man 11 would go on to dethrone Mega Man 2's 1.51 million units sold it did do that. as the best-selling title of all time. About four years after release, thanks to Capcom's new evergreen strategy to keep pushing Mega Man 11 and put it on sale over a long period. Mega Man 2 held that bestseller title for 30. I think he mentions that at some point, so I will address that when he mentions that. So it is quite the momentous moment. Maybe it was because of the evergreen strategy, the fact that Eleven was coming after a long hiatus, so people were fresh and excited, or both. But either way, it was clear that people wanted more Mega Man, and they showed up with their wallets. Soon after Eleven's release. It wasn't long until we heard Tsuchiya discussing the next Mega Man title in interviews. It had already been decided, and pre-production began in 2019, giving us something to look forward to, but sadly, nothing tangible has manifested yet. Instead, Mega Man Zero ZX Legacy Collection would drop in 2020 to a bit of fanfare, but it's difficult to gauge how well it actually did sales-wise since Capcom isn't always forthcoming about their titles and their financial reports unless- Yeah, this is a very interesting thing, man. Like, they, they just don't want to say at all. Like, they love to mention the game from time to time, but they just don't mention the sales numbers. I mean that that in itself is it, it just is telling us like yeah yeah we didn't do so well <laughs> and it kind of kind of sucks to be honest with you because it's like I may have not have been like fully into zero or even ZX to be honest with you but I kind of do feel like they're not bad. But they, they they do take a bit to get into. 
At least the zero zero the zeros do. Um it is a damn shame though. And and whatnot. I think what's even crazier, right? So uh we we are like we're we're always told that these are like just lazy ports, right? And I mean you can see it that way, sure I guess, but um the thing is they actually put in extra uh work into these instead of just being our ports well the, f the the first thing to truly address about these collections is well they're being brought to current consoles which is phenomenal if you ask me like let me put it this way to you let's just say i like let, let's just say i started streaming most mostly battle network to like get this grind going right and let's just let's just pretend though that the collection didn't even exist right if we were to omit the use of emulators for some reason, you would have to buy the Game Boy cartridge and either play it through um, the DS and get a capture card for it, which you can get, or have a Game Boy player and record it there. But the, D the DS capture card... That's like an outside external thing that someone else does. That's not official. And then the Game Boy Player, that's more official, but it's pretty old. And it's like, oh. And like the the thing is too, it's like we're using HDMI cables and things like that. Oh, actually, I'll even adjust the Wii U and Virtual Consoles. Um, what if you got into Mega Man? Like now, you can't buy those games anymore. Those are gone. So, if we were to get them through legitimate means, you really don't have very much anymore. So, the fact that they brought them into these collections now is fantastic. Because now, you no longer have to uh, worry about the cartridges dying. Because they have been dying, unfortunately. And then, you also don't have to worry about getting like updated cables and whatnot to capture the footage. And more importantly, especially for the virtual console... They're not behind a storefront that doesn't exist anymore. And that's great. So that is why I truly appreciate the collections. Because it's just a, a very modern way to play them. And it's great. Yeah, like, um, in case you don't know, uh, Game Boy uh, Advances, or the cartridges, they, they have like a battery inside them. So that way they can uh, retain save data and other things like that. But but if the battery dies, you can still play the game, but it doesn't retain the save data. It, it's literally just you have to play the game one setting, or you just you're screwed. So yeah. Unless they did amazingly well, and maybe that says it all right there. The consensus is that it did well enough, but definitely the least well performing at the legacy. I was talking about battle working specifically. I wasn't talking about the other stuff. And I was saying if the Battle Network collection did not exist. That was what my whole story and point was. Collections, unfortunately. The same year, we got something totally different. A Mega Man X mobile gacha game in the form of Mega Man X Dive, or Rockman X Dive as it was known at the time. Pretty much right after that, the pandemic kind of happened. So it fell on Dive to hard carry the franchise and the consciousness of us fans for the years to come. Aside from the occasional mobile crossover here and there, but the vast majority of them were Japanese only. The updates to X-Dive every other week certainly did spark new discussions and provided new content to digest on a consistent schedule. Which I don't want to get into Dive 2 too much because this is basically like a reaction to the video itself, not like to the games and whatnot, but I, I always found it very interesting that Dive's like... Uh... The dive, uh, like, their update schedule was quite frequent for a game. Like, normally speaking, characters, like, I mean, so you have, like, different banners and one that like, kind of overlap, but generally speaking, at least, I can probably speak about it in, in Fae terms, but, like, for Fire Emblem Heroes, for example, um, uh, they have, like, new heroes, and then they have, like, like, limited time heroes like the event ones like the, like the easter christmas things like that and then you have like the the superheroes like the 
like the legendary banners and things like that. So to put that in X terms, uh, like the like the the dive festivals where you get those limited characters there. I found it interesting that those are like a lot more frequent compared to other gotcha games, and I was like, huh. They just kind of crank these out pretty quickly. I think I think it does kind of even itself out at some point, but I do remember it was like it took a while for things for new things to come in, and then it felt like it was just like every other week, like something new. So like, whoa, going too fast, there, buddy. But yeah, which shows the strength of having a live service game like this around. However, it was still a gotcha game. The economy wasn't exactly great. The game suffered many bugs throughout its time. The story was a weird, fourth wall breaking English mess, and while we did get a lot of fan favorites, original characters, new takes on existing ones, and official art for characters that never got one before, so that was neat, we had finally come to the point that Mega Man was becoming a waifu simulator, and boy oh boy did it ignite controversy and basically split the fandom in half. Yeah, people who don't play gacha games, they're they're just not used to that at all. They're they're just not used to this at all. I I'm a I, I play gachas. I'm like I'm so this is like so I'm so, I'm just so used to this. It's like yeah, it was it was bound to happen. And it did. I tell you, some of those arguments weren't pretty. It's definitely safe to say that the new artwork that was awesome and the crazy amount of playable characters was the best part about the game. The rest, you can kind of take it or leave it. If anything, it gave us something to do while waiting for the next big game to happen, so in that way, it was fun while it lasted. However, like I said, the pandemic happened. So that fast forwards us to 2023 with Mega Man Bound Network Legacy Collection, which is currently the fastest selling title in the franchise selling over 1 million units after only a couple weeks following the launch. For comparison, it took Mega Man 11 an entire year and one month to reach the same milestone. So this is extremely unprecedented for Mega Man. Technically, they are counting both volumes in the sales numbers, which is kind of cheating. But I can't argue with a Battle Network sweep, baby! Or should we say a Battle Network 4 sweep? Yeah, baby. Um, I am actually legitimately curious because I think I do think you, I, I I do believe you can buy them separately. But how many people actually? Uh, I am actually legitimately curious. How many people actually bought it separately? Because I, I always found like. It was just worth getting both, regardless. Especially like when it came to the sales. So I was like, who actually just only bought one version? I legit don't know. Um, I I I I don't think I've have met anyone who bought them separately. I didn't even know you could, to be honest. But then later on, I was like, oh, you can't find. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, uh, yeah, so. Uh, hey, that's not true. They're has bandos. G give them, give them big boys uh, some love too. Mega Man 11 is currently at 1.8 million units, and BNLC was last reported to be at 1.42 million units in September of 2023. So it's not hard to see BNLC even surpassing Mega Man 11 in due time, which throws a wrench in the predictions of what could come next. Does it really count though if BNLC isn't on the Capcom Platinum titles list? Because you know you, you're next gonna tell me that the sky is blue and we need to breathe air. Oh, the separate volumes? Well, I'll let you decide. And of course, dive offline is dive offline. I just covered that in the intro. So great! Mega Man is doing the best for himself than ever before. Played in a good part. <laughs> now what? Well, that Eric. brings us to today. Back in 2018, there was legitimate hope for the future, but it seems the further away we get from Mega Man 11's release date without any other sequel announcements, the more the faith dwindles and we slowly find ourselves back in the same place we were in before. 
It doesn't help that we just learned that series producer Kazuhiro Tsuchiya recently departed Capcom after he seemingly had to put his Mega Man duties on the back burner to help get Street Fighter 6 through the finish line. I legitimately do wonder if that was the reason why he left. Was was it because he actually did try to um did he actually like try to get Mega Man on the table and he kept getting denied? So therefore he just couldn't take it anymore? I I do wonder if that's the reason. I don't know. I don't think so. Um but I don't know. Like I I'm definitely not in Capcom and I'm definitely not him. So yeah, I'm I'm just kind of curious. Uh, I mean, maybe he found a, another opportunity. Maybe he's like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> uh yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of feel like Dive doesn't have any nude mods. There's no really need for it anyways. I don't think they allow it, to be honest. Unless some crazy person does it on his own, like, and whatnot, but, yeah, otherwise, that's eh, whatever. Like, I don't really care. I'm, I'm, I'm much more interested in, like, well, the restorations, but things like, uh, GB stand, like, just new characters that they're adding to the game. Those are the mods I'm interested in. They're, those are really nice. Um, yeah, so, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, Definitely looking forward to those. I love mods. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a place you can get them, but I mean, I don't care. I don't think it's bad enough that <clears throat> I can officially say we are in the Dark Ages 2 Electric Boogaloo just yet. Objectively, okay, cool. the franchise is still alive and well for now, but the fear is we are heading that way. And the longer this relative radio silence goes on, the more we have to be subjected to takes like, Jay Easy has done more for Mega Man than Capcom has in 10 years, bruh. Like, I 100% understand where they are coming from, but man, man, I sincerely hope that is bait. Okay. No, I'm dying on that hill. That man. <laughs> no. It was funny, though. Can you believe that guy actually got hate? People actually were not liking Jay-Z because he was, like, pushing Mega Man like crazy. And I'm like, why? That guy's cool. What? That beat was fire. Not to mention that, the, like, literally January, what was it, January 6th? What, was it, what day was it? Oh, wait. Oh, I want to get the date right. Like... I January 7th, yeah. Yeah, that that was sick. Like, oh my god, so um man. Good stuff. I like the guy. Then he moved on to uh guilty gear. I understand <laughs> where they are coming from, but man. Man, I sincerely hope that is bait. Okay, that said. I wanna I believe it. That That's my head cannon. Has dropped the ball full stop when it comes to communicating about the franchise's future with the fans. On the other hand, they probably do have a very good reason for keeping the cards close to their chest until they have something tangible to show. We have the Sonic fandom as an example of what happens when you're a little too transparent with your fans. Like the Sonic Prime timeline placement debacle. And yes, it is a huge downer that the last five years has consisted mostly of collections and mobile stuff. In 2018, I popped off at a brand spanking new Mega Man game. In 2023, I was popping off at online battles for Battle Network, even though in practice, when I visit the lobbies, all I hear is crickets. Yeah, sorry Capcom, but... No, you hear me in the Battle Network 1 lobby like, Hey! What a P and 1 PvP, bro! <laughs> and nobody shows up, bro. It's the most depressing thing. But no, it is, it is, it is pretty funny uh, that... Yeah, it's like, we're so excited for this new game. And then years later, we're so excited. Maybe just about excited for... There's like 10 games that we've all mostly played <laughs> so uh, cool 
but but again i do i do absolutely uh i do absolutely uh love the fact that this collection exists to be honest with you um the other thing too with pvp is tango kind of exists it's like so much better now me personally speaking i don't know if it's just a me thing or maybe maybe uh i don't know but oh <laughs> uh that is true thank you uh mr reptos claw for the five dollars uh yep as long as as long as there are two people playing online it's still a living game um absolutely I'm scaring the shit out of me with that thank you <clears throat> no that's true though um like you have to really truly think about that where these games just weren't available modern unless you had the the virtual console if you didn't have the virtual console i'm oh, sorry but yeah i mean there's still like some things that we could that that could be better and but at least they're making an effort for it so well we'll just have to see how they do in the future and whatnot it looks like tango is still king I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that says something about where we're at. It is true that Capcom has been taking some massive L's lately. The biggest controversy perhaps is adding the Enigma DRM retroactively to their Steam library, including games that hadn't received updates in years. It's been an ongoing process over the course of months, but that process suspiciously sped up by a lot recently after someone mistakenly enabled a Chun-Li nude mod in an official Street Fighter 6 tournament. Yikes. Not gonna lie, the discourse over the DLC costumes pricing probably didn't help matters either. But the first reason- $15 turtle costumes. <laughs> Don't ever change Capcom. <laughs> um, yeah, that's uh... That whole, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna address it too. Uh, but the 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 goddamn DRM thing, it, it's just like, man, you guys, like, listen, they're stupid. Oh yeah, that's true. Mega Man's now in, in Street Fighter. I have I have to hop on now, you guys. <laughs> Uh, $15 turtle cost. <laughs> uh, oh man. It's just funnier. That's Don't even get me started with Spy Family. You make in front but yeah, so just to. For some reason, right? So. Why why it's the $15 turtle costume? So. It's seven. It's seven fifty for a costume, right? For the, for the fighter cash. And then he shows it here. These are the these are what's available. So unfortunately, like you can't like you have to spend five dollars and then twelve dollars to get just enough to purchase said uh costume. And my dog does not like that either. Um Hey, how you doing, buddy? So yeah, uh that's why it was it was called uh Fifteen dollar turtle costume because you literally had to spend like fifteen, sixteen bucks just to get one. That's just one, by the way. Like, I, like I, I think Raptor, you confirm there is no bundle for this. You have to buy the meat separately. By the way, kind of insane. Once again, Capcom never change. The first reason is just funnier. That's the last oopsie poopsie you want to make in front of the company itself. Essentially, what the Enigma DRM does is it stops mods that rely on the EXE file to function. However, there are workarounds that users have found for it, and Enigma does not break simple asset replacement mods, surprisingly enough. Yeah, so literally, I, I don't remember if it was fully day one or maybe week one. I'll be generous and say week one, but ProfNot was like, yeah, guys, these are legacy collection mods. Yeah, we, we, we fixed them. All right, cool. Awesome. Here's the workaround. Unfortunately, its inclusion has led to reports of slowdown, graphics breaking, and certain games outright not working, especially for Steam Deck users. The one thing Enigma has not done, however, is infect your device with viruses. 
That was a claim made up by a Rage Bait account that was using an entirely unrelated hentai game as an example. In the community's testing... <laughs> I remember when I first saw that post, I was like, oh my god, guys, the... The DRM is adding all these viruses, man. Whoa, I got all these viruses, dog. I'm like, and then, and then somebody took a closer look. It's like, dude, you got hentai games. What are you, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, yeah, of course they're going to have things. But yeah, but you, but you want to try to push that on to, uh, to, to the Capcom DRM, which is like, because see, that's the thing though, right? Most people just read, glance, and then just run with it. They don't actually fully sit down and, like, look at it and actually see, confirm whether or not it's true. Now, to be perfectly fair, right, I do that, too. It happens. Like, because, I mean, it works, right? But sometimes something sounds so silly, you kind of just want to make sure that it's, like, you know, accurate, you know? It is funny, though. It is quite funny. It's even funnier that, once again, a gooner tried to tell us that Capcom's ruining things, when, in fact, it was a gooner with his hentai games. So far, no harmful viruses have been found in the Capcom games. Well, other than the fictional viruses in Mega Man Bound Network. Still... Yeah, the whole thing is rather silly and harmful, not only to the games, but communities too. God, don't get me started on the reports of Capcom going after YouTubers for using mods. Or the Mega Man X Dive NFT stuff. Still, one of the funniest things that's ever happened in Capcom history. X Dive NFTs. The greatest of all time. It's so funny. It's just so funny. Um, a little comment though, uh, and I, I did overblow this, but to be perfectly fair, I have a very legitimate, uh, like whole thing with, uh, just people in general taking down videos and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> and I'll comment on the NFTs afterwards, but basically like, yeah, sometimes companies do just take videos down and whatnot, and it might be just one video, it might be a whole bunch, but, and then, and then, like, it's easy to, like, again, take the one story and just kind of blow it up, right? But it is still a scary thing, because a company can literally just come by and just take a video down just because. And they can! They absolutely can! That's, just, that's the scary part. Um, but, even though, to me, even though it's just one video, you shouldn't be worried about it too much. At least to me, I'm a very paranoid person, so it's like that's still scary in itself. I just wouldn't, I, I just wouldn't want to fuck around with that if I had to. Because like, it, even to be perfectly honest with you, um, sometimes Capcom videos or, or Cap when you play Capcom games, some of those like uh, we, we, me and Shadowrock have uh, encountered this from time to time. Uh, sometimes those videos would be uh, picked up by uh, copyright. I believe it's copyright. <clears throat> And it's by, done by Capcom, but the reason why is for that is because um, they have the whole thing with their, like, the, you know how they have their trailers for the, when they show off the games and whatnot? Well, um, they have it set, like, automatically if, like, that, that music or that, uh, or the footage was picked up, um, it'll automatically, um, excuse me, it'll automatically, uh, uh, not, not fully strike at the channel, but, like, Hey, pick up like say hey just so you know you have some some footage here that that uh that's being picked up by so and so and capcom was pretty good with that they're like hey if you bring it up uh we'll we'll, we'll like take that away right because it's a thing that's done automatically and and whatnot here's an even even more fucked up thing and it's part of the reason why i don't necessarily use Mega Man 8 music uh so me and shadowrock and I believe a few of us, uh, a few others of us in the crew back then, we found out, like, every time we use, like, Mega Man 8 music, just, just the music itself, it would get picked up hardcore. But it wouldn't be Capcom themselves. It'd be, like, these people we've never heard of before. And it turns out the reason why is because they tend, they will take the music, sample it for their own 
music, and then they themselves copyright it. So it's not Capcom putting the takedown, uh, the the copyright or or the or flagging your video. It's the person who took their music, sampled it to make their own music, or whatever, and then they they go after you. And that that to me was I was like, what? That's insanity, bro. And as far as I'm aware, I mean, I, I, like, because I've kind of used music from all Mega Man's, or at least I tried to. I believe it's only eight that really does this. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but. It is what it is, I guess. So, and yeah, it, that was a that was a bizarre thing. But even so, going back to the point, it does still kind of freak me out a bit because li- literally, YouTube is unfortunately that place where you like all it takes is one uh one report, and all of a sudden your channel could be in hot water. It doesn't have to be a legitimate claim. It could be even be illegitimate. It's like crazy. But, you know, um, I mean, that's, you just got to live through it at the end of the day. And I know I said I was going to go back to the NFTs, but what the, what the fuck else is this really to say? They had these dumbass sprites and they try to sell it to you for crypto. Like, whatever, bro. Just right click and save it. <laughs> okay, that last one is more on Capcom Taiwan, but still, it's all rather disappointing to hear. Point being, ain't nobody in their right mind is gonna be out here trying to defend old Capcom right now. Funnily enough, their Capcom Town website is holding a super election survey at the time of this video. One of the questions is surprisingly very self-aware to many of our complaints, such as needs to communicate with his fans better, too slow to release new number titles, too money oriented, this still irks me to this very day, man. Like, you are literally, like, you know. You know. You absolutely know. Why? And I hate the fact that they, they said, do you have a complaint? Please select the one. It's like, no, motherfucker. Let me select more than one because there, I can't like, the most of these problems here are kind of big. I can't just pick one. Are you, are you kidding me, bro? <laughs> like, um, which is the one that I picked? I think Nobody would pick this one. No complaints here. No, shut up. Um, <laughs> um, to be fair to Revo, this survey was not out. Like he, um, to his to his credit, I uh, I will be fair. By the time the video came out, I think the survey was already like it was either either just came out or it was coming out. Like. You also have to realize too, just because the video came out at a certain at a certain date, that doesn't necessarily mean that it took that long to uh to like make the video. I'm pretty sure that video was in the works for quite some time. So by the time he was about to finish, then maybe he he he, he like I, I, I leg- yeah, I don't think the, the, the survey was even a thing until the when the video came out. So he, he feasibly couldn't address the the um the survey at all so i can't blame him so for that at all in fact i think i even mentioned in the in the reaction when i was reacting to that i talked about it but it's because he like it came out when i reacted to it but he obviously is not gonna say anything about it because he can't but if i had to pick one Uh, yeah, needs to communicate with the fans is the, is the number one issue. I think that's the one I picked as well. Or reboot old IPs already. Honestly, all of the above could work, aside from maybe lame designs. I think Capcom designs are cool. Only issue is, you can only choose one. Now, that is lame. But then comes this question. Is there a game that you would like to see completely remade with the latest technology? including character design and story direction? 
Ooh, an original Ace Attorney Trilogy remake? Ooh, oh boy. I don't have any objections to that. Hold it. Do I see Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 remakes right there? All right. On one hand, if any game... It's right here, John. You can't see the mouse, but I'm, 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 I'm hovering over the, the not here. It's Chover Bros. We're not getting the, the, the Dino Crisis Bros. It deserves a Mega Man 11 <laughs> style remake. It should be Mega Man World 5 on Game Boy. I would even take a remake compilation of all the Game Boy titles. Get all Mega Man Mania up on this. Releasing the first three entries again is not exactly what a lot of people in the fandom are looking to see right now, especially since Legacy Collection 1 already exists, among other ports. And if you want to remake <laughs> Mega Man Wily Wars and Mega Man Powered Up 1 exists as well. Though I wouldn't say no to a Powered Up 2 and 3, the PSP remakes are sick, in a good way. On the other hand, there is some merit to the idea of a modern remake. Thinking over the original trilogy in the vein of the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy treatment could be cool and it may be one of the best ideas to get more people into the ecosystem and playing Mega Man, which is something the franchise needs desperately because the existing fans aren't going to live forever. This could also entice the older folks that mostly know the series for the original trilogy, aka just hey, Mega John, Man 2 and 3. Speaking of, Mega Man 3 did suffer from a rushed development, leading to cut ideas and a somewhat unfinished product. So a proper remake would be a chance to give 3 a second chance at greatness and maybe implement some lost content. Regardless, this one question certainly got the Doom posting going and to be fair, a lot of them were probably under the impression that Capcom was only asking about Mega Man, when in reality, this question features a ton of other franchises as potential candidates. That being the case, I don't think it's really worth getting angry over a survey that we don't know whether it will manifest as a tangible product or not. That is true. Um, I chose Ace Attorney, because I'll be real, it would be really nice to see like a more modern-esque versions of the Ace Attorneys. Um, I feel like no, there's like no wrong answer here, to be perfectly honest with you. Although there are some I, I just don't even know, to be perfectly honest here. Um, but I'll I'll iterate what I said in my in the previous reaction. Well, I'm not too happy of the fact that like they're mentioning Mega Man specifically one, two, and three classic. I don't think that's a terrible idea either because it really it really would modernize like Mega Man, like because. Like, I think we're all in agreement. Classic is, like, the easiest to get into. Next to X. But mostly classic, it's, it's very easy to get into. Like, if you wanted to introduce Mega Man into, to, to a person who's just never played it, though. So, imagine classic, uh, the classic remakes in, like, in their newer engines. And, um, modernized, remade. Definitely the quality of life would go so so high it's not even funny it would be phenomenal i i i would be so happy if they did it. it it still sucks that it's the classic but hey to be perfectly honest with you if you're going to try and introduce uh mega man to the broader audience it sucks but classic is like the way to go you know like it, it's definitely uh, and not to mention, I do have full faith in Capcom that they can find the balance of appeasing their old fans while definitely making it more very welcoming to the newer fans. For sure. Like, I, I do feel... I feel like if any of these games were remade modernly now, they have that down pat. It's kind of insane. I, I, I have to give them that. Honestly speaking, most of my faith comes from Resident Evil 2 Remake because, sweet Jesus, that's such a good game. I am going to leave a link to the survey down below because it is important to do whatever we can to communicate our feelings to Capcom, as long as it doesn't turn into harassment of employees or something. 
I'm not saying they will follow through with our wishes per se, because at the end- For all we know, they could just take all the answers, just throw it in the trash, bro. <laughs> but I, 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 I do have to agree with that point, though. It's like, this shouldn't be, this, this shouldn't be like your gateway to be like, uh, dear Capcom in, uh, intern coon, fuck you. And then just, that's it. Cause that's not, that's not going to mean anything to them. They're just going to brush the shit off. In fact, they might even just ignore it. I don't know, but you know, this is like, if, if you want to be critical, uh, you know, like be, be critical, but don't be. Don't be too volatile with it. Just like, just be firm, but gentle. If that makes sense. At the, the day, they are a company. Assuming it's still up, I don't even know if it's still up. Of making money, so their top brass and shareholders get priority in the decision making, no matter what. The key is to get those people at the top of the food chain thinking. Golden rule: Don't be stupid. Blue bomber, and you know, there might be a sign of the tide turning already. Last year in July, during the 44th General Shareholder Meeting, shareholders started asking about the future of the franchise and the potential for ports. Here is what was said. Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection was released in April and has surpassed 1 million units in sales, contributing to existing IP utilization and user expansion. What are your plans for the Mega Man series? Including Mega Man 11, the latest entry in the franchise, Mega Man is one of Capcom's historic IPs and is loved by fans. And as such, we want to take care in how we develop the series. We are considering how to approach the production of new entries in the series, which requires numerous factors, including the development of a solid concept, ideas, and gameplay, etc. Tell me your plans for new ports or collections in the Mega Man series. We are considering our approach to ports of past entries titles, which includes addressing technical issues. In other words, trust me bro, we're working on it. Which, at the very least, is the opposite of saying they're doing nothing. And that about sums up our current situation. I, I kind of do wonder if they, um... I'm not going to assume they're going to release the other collections for Star Force and Legends. We're just going to hope for it, but... I kind of do wonder what can they do for those games to make them like... Like... I don't know. Because, like, I, I'll tell you right now, I've, I've never played Legends at all, so... I would kind of wonder, like, what would they do to, like, kind of help it, like, give it that quality of life, you know? Um, uh, that would be the one. <laughs> Change the controls. Uh, I don't know if they'd go that f I mean, I would hope they would, but I don't know if they would, actually. And then, I'll be honest, I think when it comes to Star Force, what can they do? Really? I mean, they don't have to do something similar with the touchscreen that they did for ZX and ZXA, because it, it does utilize the touchscreen quite a bit, not just, you know, menuing and stuff. So I'd be quite interesting. And I, I would I would especially like to see, like, collections for, like, those, um, not even just the spinoffs, but I mean, like, the Game Boy, the Game Boy games, you know? Like, sure, they're kind of like, at least the X ones are, are kind of like just Mega Man X, but like a bit different. But I would absolutely, I like to see those in a collection. That'd be pretty cool, you know? At this time, I wish to directly address sentiments that I have seen shared in the community, Q&A style. So, legs go, Lan. Why don't they just make yearly Mega Man sequels again? Resident Evil and Monster Hunter have no problem getting yearly titles out the door, so wouldn't that mean more- Oh my god, you guys need to listen to this shit so goddamn bad, it's not even funny. More money? Isn't the Blue Bomber their mascot? Alright, let's get this out of the way first. When Mega Man 2 came out in 1988, it did absolute gangbusters at the time- Go ahead, I'll address it afterwards. One million units sold. That is insane for the time period. Culturally, the game resonated with gamers in a big way that even Capcom hasn't forgotten, given that practically every crossover featuring classic Mega Man will have a leaf shield <gasps> weapon Golly, or some other Mega baby. Man reference or music at a bare minimum. Not to mention the numerous ports and plug and play consoles out there with Mega Man 2 on them. Also, Mega Man 9 does exist. Now, there's nothing wrong with capitalizing on your cash cow in the nostalgic sense, 
but yeah. I will actually, uh, I think before he continues, um, that is true. Like, it wasn't even just Mega Man. It was like almost all their ca all their games in general. Like Monster Hunter kind of went through the same thing. Resident Evil kind of went through the same thing. And it was like, yeah, it, it was like Capcom was literally just like by some way, shape, or form shitting games out like crazy, and to, to the point where it's like, I think what they like. Because they, they definitely tried to do this with Resident Evil, and that was to capture Lenny in a bottle twice. Because Resident Evil 4 did phenomenally good. It, it was kind of insane how well Resident Evil 4 did. So they tried to capture that same magic again and again, as you tried, as you saw with like 5, 6, and like whatever other games that came out as well. The fighting games, yeah, they they, they definitely kind of went super hard with uh, fighting games as well. They, they just, like, they just, they really just wanted to just try to. Cap they did they just shack games out like crazy. And look what happened. It was nuts. People remember we we got the Street Fighter cross Tekken thing, but we never got the Tekken cross Street Fighter thing. Yeah, that was gonna be a thing. There was it was literally two crossovers and then like the how the reverse is kind of insane. And yeah, this has been a Capcom staple for such a long time. Street Fighter 2 is like the absolute testament of it. It's it's a, they even memed it in like that DLC for uh I think it was Dead Rising 3, was it? They had like that that multiplayer thing. They were like it was it was called the super hyper turbo blah 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 thing and it, it was just like just Title upon title upon title upon title. They 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 know what they were doing. They they absolutely know. But yeah, they they just they they just came out with a bunch of versions. Although to be fair, with Street Fighter at least two, there were like there weren't like patches or anything you could do. Like literally, if you were to send out a patch, you were you were going to uh you had to you had to bring out a new cartridge. At least Capcom was generous enough to be like, hey guys. We got this cool new version. It's called the Turbo Edition, or the Hyper Edition, or the Poopy Butt Edition, things like that. Capcom was not the only games to do that, believe it or not, where they just, like, quote-unquote, release patches for their games. The only difference is most developers did not tell you at all. Like, there's a reason why, um, for example, like, when you look at the older games, there's like different versions of older games, but you you personally wouldn't know that because to you the cartridge is the exact same. You just wouldn't know. But at least Capcom actually advertised it. They never outright told you that it was like a it was it was like a patch or anything, but they were like, this is just a newer version with new features and things like that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, the bias is noticeably strong. That carries over to the casual gaming audience too. And that is why the meme exists Yo, that about guys people gassing up 2, 3, and X1 like they're the greatest games ever. But then you find out they haven't played much else the franchise has to offer. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just observing here that those games brought up happen to be the entries that sold the most. I have my own stories that highlight how people outside the fandom view the franchise. One time, I was at a Hobby Lobby picking up a frame for my 86th Mega Man 11 poster, which is awesome by the way, and the store yeah. cashier asked me what I'm framing. When they heard that it was for a Mega Man poster, they said, oh, I don't really like old retro games, but I do like the Xbox 360. Yeah, me too. That was a fun <laughs> Come on, bro! <laughs> We're comparing retro to 360. We're at that age, dude! I'm old. Another story I have is when my college classmates discovered that I have a Mega Man focused YouTube channel and one of them immediately brought up how Mega Man 2 is really hard. Even though Mega Man 2 is unique for having an easy mode in North America. So even in a post Mega Man 11 Japan did the right thing, guys. They were they were perfectly fair in adding the other version, the other mode in the, the American releases, guys. We just weren't ready, bro. <laughs> uh, uh, 
I believe so. I, I think I do remember that. Um, that's funny. That's really funny. Yeah. I, 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 I do feel like at this point, like, it's so weird to think, right? But I, I do think, like, the 360, PS3, and, uh, was it Wii? Yeah, I think it was Wii. Yeah, that's, they can be considered, uh, they, they can be considered uh, retro at this point. Like, it's, it's getting to that point, you know? Which is so weird to think, right? It's it's so bizarre. Like, you, we say retro is like, oh, you're thinking Super Nintendo, oh, you're thinking NES, Sega Saturn, things like that. But it's like, oh god, GameCube, PS2, Xbox, now maybe 360. Guys, guys, I can't. <laughs> World. The franchise seems to still be viewed as old, retro, and incredibly difficult. Hmm. Maybe. Also, to be perfectly fair, guys, like, I love Mega Man 9. It's one of my favorite Mega Man 9s. Well, it's only one Mega Man 9. Yeah, it's one of my favorite Mega Man classics, but it is kind of weird to, to, like, look at Mega Man 9 that came out more recent, and then it's like, yeah, it's 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 a wonder people think this this game is the the, the series retro because they they, they kind of just go back to their old style when they don't really modernize it. You know what I mean? It's like, like I don't blame people for thinking that. To be perfectly honest with you, seven's also my favorite, but I, I I know nine is definitely my top three. Nine is definitely into my top three. I, seven's uh probably number one to be honest. But yeah. Oh yeah, right. Not, not in this retro, but I mean, like, I'm talking like before, like when it fairly, when it just fairly came out, people were like saying, "Oh, that game's retro." I was like, "Yeah, it looks retro, but now it is." Oh god, guys, we've the loop, the loop. Maybe the proposed remakes aren't such a bad idea after all. Anyway, I don't think anyone could argue the cultural impact of games like Mega Man 2, the first Mega Man X. And 4D 2000s kids, Mega Man Bow Network, they are frequently referenced everywhere you look, even in games, anime, and manga. 2, 3, and X1 sold amazing for the time period, when the gaming hobby was more niche than it is today. So yeah, for that 80s, 90s era before the breakout successes of Resident Evil- Also, I will say this too, uh, just to like, I guess, add a point. Um, like, I understand that, like, you know, X and classics are so different, but, dude, like, if, if there, if, if someone to personally ask me, um, you know, which game would I get into, I would, I would, I would definitely tell them go to X, because X is like, X is peak gaming. I can gush about X all day, every day. Peak. Peak. And it's, I, I feel like it's a game most people can get into. Peak. When Monster Hunter came into play, I would agree with saying that Mega Man Yo, was a congrats! I will Capcom. one day get one. But I don't know when though. Modern era, but congrats. You dig a little deeper and it turns out Mega Man is actually kind of a niche franchise, isn't it? From the sales data out there and even judging from the low budgets and short length of each entry, even the RPGs are shorter than your typical game in that genre. Mega Man gives me the vibes of an indie IP, at least as much as one owned by a AAA developer can be. The fact that, that Mega Man 11 debuted at a $30 <laughs> price tag instead of a full $60 one tells me that Capcom probably feels the same. The low budgets and short length is the entire point of the Mega Man franchise though. The games are cheaper to produce, and especially in the pre-HD era, they didn't take long to make. So earning a profit isn't a hard task at all, as long as the sales remain strong enough to be sustainable. And that last sentence right there is where the problem presented itself right before the beginning of the Dark Ages. First of all, did you know that you can count the number of original non-collection Mega Man titles that broke the 1 million units mark on just one hand? Seriously, let's list them right now. Mega Man 11, 1.8 million. Mega Man 2, 
1.51 million. Yep. Mega Man Battle Network 4, 1.34 million. Mega Man X, 1.16 million. And finally, Mega Man 3 at 1.08 million. Then there are two collections on the Platinum list. Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 at 1.5 million. Wow, it's actually kind of close to dethroning Mega Man 2 as well. Though you could say that's just more Mega Man 2 supremacy. And then Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 at 1.1 million. More X1 sweeps. Now, Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 is actually a recent addition to the list last year. Proving the. Yeah, it's kind of insane that, like, literally only five of these games only sold up to, like, sold over a million out of 169. I wonder if that counts to collections as well when it counts like the total number of games. So yeah, um, but the, no, the the thing as well too is um uh I actually I can answer that question as to why Battle Network Four sold that well. It is very simple. Um, basically, Battle Network Three was so well received that it's like. Oh shit, you guys. 3 is like this super great game. Oh man, I can't wait to play 4. And then they play 4. And then they love it, and it's fantastic. It's great, and it's peak. <laughs> I can't even say with a straight face. Oh wait, I, I can, technically speaking, because I, I, I absolutely feel that way. But it, it is like, uh, I, I won't deny that the expectations from three to four did hella fall down and then yeah it kind of just you know um yeah yeah they weren't ready for the tournament arcs you guys they, they weren't ready they weren't ready it was too they were too ahead of their time they couldn't do it <laughs> oh man uh but no that that basically is like like one of the reasons why it's because like it it it, it basically road from a high wave and you can like like even if it's bad it's still going to sell fairly well because of the expectations coming from the previous but then yeah you know uh well yeah my bad he wasn't ready for the tournament nobody nobody was ready for the tournament arc baby they weren't ready <laughs> fact that all these collections along with Mega Man 11 have long legs on them years after release but you do notice that they count the volume separately which is why BNLC isn't on here yet anyway that's not a whole lot of games right? I'm still curious and how much each one sold games came out in that late 80s early 90s golden era Meanwhile, Bound Number 4 was certainly riding on the peak of its series in the 2000s. With the peak gaming right Bound here, Number baby! being so good, at least to most people. The ongoing anime, merchandise, and even Capcom's marketing was on point that year. And of course, we got the recent success of Mega Man 11. I believe, I believe that's all, folks. Now, let's take a step back and look at the broader picture. According to Capcom's official game series sales webpage, Mega Man places number four amongst the IPs, behind Street Fighter, Monster Hunter, and Resident Evil. Not too shabby, right? Until you look at the sheer number of titles Mega Man has, 169, and only seven of those made it to the Platinum list? Holy smokes, the ratio. Resident Evil serves as an interesting direct comparison here as it has almost exactly the same number of titles but more than triple the unit sales that Mega Man has. Well, I know which one of these is getting all the AAA budgets and marketing love. Yeah, th this right here, it, it, this was like, when I first saw this, I was like, dude, just now, now literally just seeing the numbers in front of you. All it took was some guy to put the numbers in front of you. He's like, yeah, that makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. It's true. My scrunk lead Leon Scott Kennedy. He's so he's great. But yeah, it's 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 to to see um can I yeah. To see like they both have the similar amount of titles, literally just one off, but 
Over triple, my guys. That's insane. Like, damn, guys. That's nuts. My favorite Scrunkly Leon. He is, in fact, carrying the Thranch. <laughs> it is still pretty good, though. Like, Devil May Cry wishes they were there. And, like, oh, what was. Oh, God. I wish I had that tweet. Uh, but. Yeah, man, like, and that is true. Like, Resident Evil 4 is still fucking insane. Like, it's still selling, like, crazy cakes. So, I, 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 I just, I just, you know, that's nuts. Let's go back to, uh, here, though. Right. Well, I know which one of these is getting all the AAA budgets and marketing love. Speaking of being fair, that is something Capcom could seriously improve on is market Mega Man more in general. But maybe because of the low budgets, that's not exactly the most feasible thing to do. So yeah, 41 million is a cool number, but it was a result of quantity over quality more than anything else. Until the titles released within the last five years helped boost the overall count. By All right, hold on. Let me see. Twenty six forty nine. What was the? Uh, let me see. Moss on it real quick. Okay. Uh, so they don't have that much of a big saturation, but uh, Moss Hunter did actually kind of go through that as well. Um, where? Uh, well, I personally speaking, right. Before World, I considered uh, Monster Hunter going through the monster uh, through the Pokemon route, where it's like it's like the same game for each generation, and there's like new features and things like that here and there, new gimmicks here and there. But overall, it's the same game as time goes on. It was only until World that it truly shook up the formula and just like really changed it and made it more much more accessible to more people than just the hardcore to play the game. So. You know, I'm very happy with where Monster Hunter is right now, especially with Worlds coming out. Oh god, I cannot wait for Worlds. Oh my oh sweet Jesus. Um But yeah, uh They all kinda were like on that boat, you know, where <laughs> how many of the ninety eight titles, how many Street Fighters are different versions of two and ain't no fucking way. <laughs> Well, yeah, that 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 is for sure as well, and not not to mention, Monster Hunter, all like only fairly recently was like started being being made more in the West. Like they had, Monster Hunter had games in the past, but they like sprinkled that like very very seldom. Like you had like the one for the PS2, and then where it kind of sort of picked up was the one for the Wii, and then there was like the one for the PSP and things like that. So it like and that I do remember there was uh there was an operation kind of similar to uh the one for Xenoblade uh one. Um but yeah they like they had like they wanted to bring the PSP game. I, I believe it was the PSP game part of the third. They wanted to bring that over to the States to the Western audience to, to be specific. So yeah, it, it took a long time and eventually now it's like this behemoth standing alongside the rest, you know? So I'm really happy where, where my son is at now. And, uh, yeah, they milked the shit out of street fighter. I mean, they still did. Like, did they come out with the, with, with the, the HD remix really recently? <laughs> It just never ends. Look at the sheer number of titles. Oh, uh, it's uh, 49. Quality there we go. The overall count by quite a bit. This quantity over quality issue and pulling stunts like developing Mega Man 7 in only three months. Yeah, you heard that right. Didn't bother Capcom so much heading into the 2000s era, but it sure reared its ugly head by the end until it was too late. Their sales strategy at the time was to release at least one new- This... Just look at this, man. Just look- just, just look at this calendar. ...to entry in their IPs a year, and if the combined total of that IP's releases reached a certain threshold, 
That's IP will continue to get games greenlighted for production in the following year. Absolute insanity that a new I, a, a new franchise or, or a new series was introduced in the franchise and within the same fucking year the sequel comes out absolutely insanity and that one game is like part of the reason why battle network is loved to this very day because i don't hear many people hollering and 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 going crazy for one people love to it's insanity that they're just what nine months apart that's unheard of insane that is how we got into situations with anywhere from four to a whopping eight different games and by the way he, he won't show it obviously because this is a Mega Man uh video but around this time as well just imagine like the other games kind of getting this sort of treatment as well maybe not this crazy like Mega Man but they were doing kind of the same games dropping in a single year it doesn't matter if any of the individual games don't sell well as long as altogether they equal a profit they would keep producing more granted each title came from a different subseries and went back and forth between the 2d side scrollers that ever sweet mother of mercy how is that cow alive how is that cow alive I'm uh, as far as I'm aware, Capcom did not make Pokemon, but uh, I'm, I'm talking about Capcom specific. I'm not talking about Pokemon. Uh, like, but I mean, to be fair, you can yeah, you can probably say the same that other other uh, devs also did it as well. But uh, the greatest of all time, there it is, the goat. Oh my god, this is like. Holy shit, bro. But he is familiar with in the RPGs. And I'll be honest, during the 2000s, the RPGs were carrying the 2D side scrollers pretty dang hard. Zero and ZX may not have gone on as long as they did without Bound Network and Star Force. So there was a mega. Oh my god. Um, and, and, and by the way, guys, in case you forgot. They were doing collections even back then. Mega <laughs> Man for everyone, as the commercial goes. And purely from a fan perspective, this era was the greatest time to be a fan ever, just because of the sheer number of new content coming out constantly. The problem wasn't the fans, it was the general audience and the media. There were so many dang games that people were struggling to keep up with it all, let alone buy them all. As for the media, during this time, you would be hard pressed to find a review that did not include a snide remark like, Oh boy, another Mega Man game! Probably the greatest example being X-Play's Mega Man Battle Network 6 review on G4 TV, where they were practically begging for the franchise to die already. We review lots of Mega Man games. Lots. Apparently, they decided to create an alternate Mega Man universe so they could crank out more games. But they made it, so we gotta review it. Here's Mega Man Battle Network 6. But in the world of the GBA, a new acronym has emerged. MMBN 6. Wait, 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 what, what? Another Mega Man game? Oh, for f sake. Why don't you just shove a pencil up my urethra so I can get it over with? God, I hate these games. Oh, come on. This game is exactly like the other five Battle Network games. That's it. Forget this game. If Capcom is going to have a robot pump out these games, then a robot can finish my review. Coma. That's what Mega Man needs. A nice, long, days of our lives style coma. Yeah. About that coma. I think he got his wish. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm not sure. I, I'll be honest.
honest, G4 TV was a channel, like, I think at the time I always wanted, but I never had. Because, like, we, uh, our, the times we had ca uh, cable was, like, uh, it, it, it was very dependent. But, uh, yeah, like, uh, I couldn't tell you, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I never really kept up with, uh, G4 TV like that, but, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> oops. Thanks, Dust Adamas. See, the fans were happy, but the general gaming audience was getting real sick and tired of being bombarded. Mega Man was becoming Call of Duty at this point, the difference being the casual gaming audience actually likes Call of Duty. Like, seriously, how did we get Battle Network 1 and 2 in the same year in Japan? It's funny that Mega Man 9 and 10 had a bigger gap between them than a lot of these other sequels that came out less than a year apart. And I definitely remember the former admin of the Mega Man Network talking about their struggles to cover the whammy of Mega Man X7, Mega Man Zero 2, Bound Number 3, and Network Transmission all at once in 2003. Then Japan still got Bound Number 4 arriving just at the tail end of that. God yeah, dipshits. Y'all should have just been happy you got all these games, bro. <laughs> that is true, though. Like, imagine being a reviewer and, like, you had to play all these games. Holy shit. I'd feel bad. Like, because especially, like, like, 3 is an RPG. 4 is also an RPG. And RPGs take a while, so yeah, I, I I couldn't imagine. I legit could not imagine how uh how could you do it? <laughs> we need Mega Man Soccer remake. Oh hell yeah, brother! Make an international call it football. Holy! As a result of people not keeping up. Sales decreased year over year to the point that the fans alone could not sustain the franchise any longer. The big wigs at Capcom never greenlighted Mega Man 3 because the sales of Legends 2 a decade ago were abysmal. That, along with the current decline, likely sealed its fate before it could ever be discussed. I will say, they should have released the prototype demo as promised though. KJ Inafune leaving when he did certainly did not help with this whole situation either, but honestly, I think the writing was already on the wall long before that. There was a Mega Man X9 in pre-production shortly after X8 came out, but that got canned. In recent years, we learned that Mega Man ZX3, or ZXC as they called it, and Mega Man Star Force 4 were both in pre-production, but were then shelved due to ZX Advents performing too poorly to warrant a sequel, forcing Anticreates to take the gameplay systems they were working on and try to implement it into Mega Man 9. Meanwhile, they were seeing that the sales were declining with Star Force 3, which, by the way, wasn't even released in Europe. At the time, Capcom attempted to bring back- I completely forgot this. these games didn't come out in Europe, because uh, now, I'm going off by memory, but I'm pretty sure the the, bad, the Star Force 3s didn't even break 500k sales. That's nuts. Back the old Bound Network fan base that were decidedly not interested in Star Force by refining Star Force Mega Man's Buster design and making additions to the gameplay and story that harken back to the Bound Network series. The game did turn out amazing. One of the best on the DS. However, unfortunately it was too little too late. The final attempt to bring both fandoms together was Rockman EXE Operate Shooting Star. An enhanced port of Bound of Work 1 to the DS with a time travel scenario featuring a playable Star Force Mega Man slapped in right before the end game, along with a Star Coliseum. It's so weird seeing Geo moving like in a 3x3 area. When he's like used to just a three by one area, kind of nuts. But uh, yeah, it's like at, at this point we're just kind of done. There's like that's whatever. I don't care. 
And that's sad. That is what it is. Mini game. Unfortunately for Capcom, the game was panned worldwide as being low effort, and it failed miserably in the Japanese market. As a result, Capcom didn't even bother. Was that one version or both versions? Because I think the number I gave out was both versions combined. But if, it, if that's both versions, wow. Other bringing OSS over to the West, leaving fan translators with the task of localizing it themselves years later. By fan translators, what? I mean the Rockman EXE Zone. Which, by the way, they recently announced that they are working on a English patch for Rockman EXE fan. As a reminder, this is mega news. You gotta bring out the news. You know, the news of these games. They're being translated. Pretty cool. Okay, so that is both. Yeah. Star Force. Oops. <laughs> network that was recently preserved. We have a video about oh! that. And according to my story. Oh! who was the original owner of the phone that the game was on, but is now translating it for them. Apparently the translation work is going along very they well. They are, so. absolutely. Yeah, that's great news. Anyway, back to EXE OSS. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can hear that. It was like, oh, back to OSS. <laughs> Damn. That would be the end of the two RPG series until last year's BNLC. The same year Star Force 3 dropped, Capcom and Inti Create said, Hey, remember Mega Man 2? Yep, they shocked the world by creating Mega Man 9, one of the last attempts at generating some goodwill with older fans with an 8-bit revival of the classic series. Coming in about a decade after Mega Man 8. Boy, and you thought the gap between 10 and 11 was bad. Generally, this retro revolution idea worked out great for them. And yeah, you can tell that they are 100% playing to the Mega Man 2 nostalgia, from returning music tracks all the way down to taking away Mega Man's charge shot and slide, which was then given to Proto Man as an exclusive. But Mega Man 9 was still a. I didn't even like. I didn't even really think about that because like, I just like. To be fair, I didn't really play the classic games until fairly recently, so I wasn't like. Like, I wasn't used to that, right? So, um, I do remember, like, not really struggling with, like, oh, wait, I can't do this. Oh, wait, I can't do that. But that is kind of funny that they basically say, all right, you know what? He, you forgot how to charge shot. You forgot how to slide. So, all you are is just jump and shoot, man. A great game. And it inspired a crazy number of retro style indie games that I believe the effects are still felt today. Albeit, even I have to admit it was tough. Mega Man 9 certainly did well enough for itself, enough for them to go forward into 10 about a year and a half later. 10 still had the 8-bit style, but you could tell that it was trying to be more original than just another Mega Man 2. A lot of effort went into it as well, such as bringing back a ton of returning Mega Man composers for the music. Unfortunately, 10 didn't end up performing quite as well. The decline was already settling in by this point, and I guess you can only play the nostalgia card once before people get tired of that too. The the joke really is, what's this land before time? Yeah, you can only do it for so long till you know, uh... Yeah. By the end of the 2000s, Capcom had milked the franchise for all it had, too fast and too soon. Not only was the general audience losing interest, but even the fans noticed a drop in quality of certain games. Then, during the Legends 3 debacle, Inafune departed from the company, essentially putting the final nail in the coffin. I know that we all love to poop on the man for various reasons that he did after leaving Capcom, and apparently we can poop on him for what he did while he was still at Capcom, because, yeah, Mega Man Universe was another game that was going to be cancelled. It was kind of like a Mario Maker before... Man, I still look at the scam and I'm thinking like, is this real, man? Is this true? I don't get it. Um, I don't like. Was it really that bad with Infinity? Like, I know it wasn't great, but I mean, he did. Like, I, at least, literally, just with Mega Man, it's like. Like, 
honestly speaking, the the reason why Mega Man is at where it's at today, you can pro you can definitely like point at him because he's the one who like truly like try to get these games going like crazy, and it just didn't work out, man. It just didn't work, man. Look at him. They might even know the greatest of all time. For Mario Maker, but for Mega Man. But it turns out that game was going to collapse on itself no matter what due to mismanagement, cheapening you now on really novice developers, and of course Inafune's over ambitious ideas. Rockman Corner has a great article about this that you should definitely check out. Another notable uh. game that got cancelled during all that was Mega Man Online, the MMO that was being made in Korea. I However, still remember the cancellation of that. Wasn't the trailer was for this game? Contributed to the studio behind the trailer been nuts. Down, and not so much Capcom themselves. So they get a pass on that one. Regardless, when the man was still at Capcom, he was in a position of power to push for more Mega Man. The Mega Man 11 development team would later admit that without Inafune around, they were pretty dang lost as to what to do next and just kind of let it go for years until. Coach Yoda came knocking on Kazuhiro Tsuchiya's door like, Hey, work! Yep, there was gonna be an MMO, and they said, Nope! We making Mega Man no more! Getting back to the question now, why don't they do yearly sequels anymore? One, the oversaturation and lack of care prior to the Dark Ages is probably still fresh in their mind, and they are arguably being too overly cautious not to repeat their past mistakes. That is why they adopted their evergreen strategy, and why they don't mind letting one game accumulate additional sales over a long period of time. I think the new strategy is working out though, since Mega Man 11 and a couple of the collections have shown to have long legs past their respective release dates. Something we haven't seen Mega Man games achieve up to this point. I can see them sticking with the strategy for the foreseeable future. Two. Game development is a vastly different world nowadays. No longer is it possible to pump out sequels in half a year, simply because HD and 4K development has significantly increased dev times and costs. I that is definitely something I don't think many people uh fully realize. It's like it is true. Um back then game development Albeit still hard compared to today's game development is is such a different world. It's an absolutely different world. So it's like a lot of the things that you have to do now, it takes up so much more time. And not to mention, not even just time, money. A lot of money. And that's like nuts. Insane. So yeah, that, and I do agree Oda should be uh, the man, the Mega Man man. Uh, but I don't know, we'll just have to see how it goes. It, it truly it truly does feel, it, it definitely does feel like um, like because of what, what Inafune did with Mega Man and just kind of just completely shotgun these games out like that, it's really hard to like want to put something in the in the in the in the like now nowadays it's really hard to just like kind of put it on the table when now gaming in itself is more expensive to make than back then uh yeah no that that's that's the that's the issue uh the game 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 development back then is much cheaper prior to today so you have to think now. You you can't do that shotgun process now because it's gaming now. Developing games now is it's much more ex expensive, and so to try to do that today, you're going to be losing a lot of money, a lot of money, and that's why they can't do that. And because of that entire surge of Mega Man games, it's just they don't they don't want that repeat. They they do not want that repeat, and they're like. We have to be careful. We have to be we have basically surgical precision in order to absolutely uh, get a good Mega Man game out there like that. True. So yeah.
uh, and not, not to mention, I don't know if you've been paying attention to gaming in general, but uh, there's been a lot of layoffs lately, so. <laughs> Damn! We already saw this with Mega Man 11 and Mega Man X Dive that were in development for two years or more. And yeah, that sounds about right. Two years is... Also, this is also another reason why uh, they, they go live service games, because... Yeah, they're expensive, but you have you'll have a much better time getting people to purchase things via live service than say purchase a video game that's static and w won't really have like any other additional purchases. And if there are any other additional purchases, it'll be very limited in comparison to say if you were to make a live service game, which are expensive. But, if done correctly, if done right, at least in the business sense, we'll definitely uh, make up for it. But even then, like, to keep them up is kind of insane. So when I do live service Mega Man games, they did! They absolutely did! It was called Dive! Practically the bare minimum these days. As for the question of why it is always Resident Evil and Monster Hunter, I mentioned how 1 million was great for Mega Man 2, 3, and X1 back in their period because the gaming hobby was still kind of niche back then compared to today. Now that- Yeah, they, they did it. They definitely did it. Next time. It's like, here it is. Here it is, you guys. Here's our live action game, Mega Man. A rock my next die, baby. It is true, like, uh, gotcha games are live service games. They just have a different name to it. It's just like, but no, it, it, that's precisely what it is. You're 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 purchasing microtransactions to continue playing a game. Of course, with Dive, you don't see like X being choked by some vine and being told, "Hey, if you don't pay X amount of dollars, or if you wait four hours, you can't continue." Stupid things like that. But but even then, it's like. Uh, yeah, it's still a thing, and ooh, the fable of Rockman Tyson. Oh dear. Uh, I don't know. I, I uh, listen. I'm just gonna wait if they ever reveal what Tyson is in due time. If they ever, sure. Uh, I'm just, I'm just like, I, I feel like Tyson. At least personally for me, it's not a thing. I'm gonna be like, hey guys, can't wait for Tyson. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait. I'm, I'm just gonna wait. That gaming has become mainstream over the past couple decades, we are seeing bigger, higher budget titles like Resident Evil and Monster Hunter that sell multiple millions of copies of each release. And while a single million is still a great milestone worthy of a sequel, it's still going- That is also true, it's like, hey guys, we sold a million copies, that's awesome in Pogger sauce. And then you're like, yeah. Get to the double digit millions and then we'll talk. To pale in comparison to the big guys in the room. That said, it is bad to put all your eggs in one basket. And Ifune himself taught us that lesson. Diversity. I don't think you're understanding uh, what what a live service game is and compared to dive because basically the currency that you're buying to uh, get these characters, that's that's the service. That's live. So yeah, is a good thing. However, when a major oh, I did see quadruple like A pandemic happens, forcing you to make decisions on what projects to prioritize your dwindling time and resources on, which ones would you choose to keep the company afloat? Are all of the legacy collections a sign of laziness and purely cashing in on nostalgia? Okay. I want new games too, but come on, that is just unfair to say. Ask yourself this, if these collections were truly low effort, would BNLC have online Shit. connectivity <laughs> at all? Because I'll tell you now, they could have easily left the single player only and called it a day, much like the Wii U Virtual Console ports. What about X Challenge or Z Chaser? Would those still exist in a quick cash grab collection? Personally speaking, I like to call uh, quadruple A games ah games. How about the fact that the Zero ZX Legacy Collection is a source port 
with high quality cutscenes and voiceovers for the ZX games. And Battle Network is like a hybrid source port? And they address some issues that fans used to have about the games. Heck, they even got the Capcom sound team making brand new music tracks and lots of brand new remixes for the last three collections that came out. Sorry, but I don't buy the low effort collection narrative. But I will tell you what. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, these collections, they weren't just let's put these games onto like a, a thingy and then just ship it, right? These were like lit like these these actually had like work put into them. Never in my days I would ever th have thought to officially be playing the Battle Network Six Japanese versions of these. I mean, the Battle Network Japanese versions of these games. I would have never thought that in my entire life. If I ever wanted to delve into that via emulator, I would. So yeah, it's like come on, guys. Like no, these are not lazy. Like, I, I I do absolutely God damn it, Automata. I do absolutely understand. Like, oh, it's just putting games, um, it's just putting games into a thing and just selling it out there. But they're the same games that we bought as time went on. Sure, I absolutely get that. But again, like at least with Mega Man, they actually put in some effort. Yeah, I. I I, that Battle Network Six is like the one of the biggest examples. Like we would not be getting like the Immortal Era. We would not be getting the the Boktai stuff. We wouldn't even be getting uh, ha Hakushaku or the Count any of that stuff if it wasn't for the fact that they decided to uh, let you play the Japanese versions. You know the versions that we ourselves never got, but the Japanese did, and now we get to experience what they experienced when these games first came out. And that that's great. That's phenomenal. And and yes, they even made new music for for some of these uh tracks in the game it's it's like it's unheard of what the fuck you know uh where where are the spinoff games then um i think capcom has like an email that you can uh send send them an email and then maybe ask them that question and then they might put that email into the recycling bin i'm just saying i don't know right what I think the purpose of them existing are one, Capcom loves to put oh, the impression wait. that Capcom was only asking Oh god, about I did it! I did it, you guys! Oh god, damn it! I knew I'd do it! I knew I'd do it! Oh, here it is! Found it. But I will tell you what I think the purpose of them existing. Where are. is it? Where is that? Oh, yeah, wait. gotta go back. Gotta go back. Gotta go back. One, Capcom loves. What the fuck, you guys? What the fuck, you guys? <laughs> <laughs> guys. <laughs> guys. Guys. <laughs> It's the first. I, I, th I thought it was just one. <laughs> no, I I know Street Fighter Two had a lot. This is really funny to see. <laughs> Loves to put out and, and 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 not to mention you also have to count now the newer stuff, which is really funny. Collections or similar re-releases to perform what we call the count. Oh my god, dude! Look at these, man. Contest. They have been known to use the sales data in reaction to these re-releases to gauge interest in a new entry. As was the case with Mega Man Legacy Collection 1's success, literally the being the reason test. Mega Man 11 exists. <laughs> Don't believe me? Here is what Tsuchiya had to say in an interview with VentureBeat at the time. What was really nice was, when we released Mega Man Legacy Collection, it did really well, Tsuchiya told me. It had 1 million sales worldwide. It was very much a way of numerically showcasing to people internally that there is a strong fan base. There are people waiting for a new Mega Man game. We were able to show that with those numbers. We wouldn't have been able to do that without our fans. I am very thankful to our fan base. I know that worrying about sales so much is a thing that should be more the concern of the companies and the shareholders, and honestly it probably should remain that way. But hearing this stuff right here 
really drives home the point that the sales kind of do matter. And the reason why we talk about it so dang much is that it's a tangible number signifying how much support the games are getting and how much our support is getting through to the companies. And of course, more support equals more games. So the higher the number, the better. It's elementary. Yeah, so to kind of add on to that, although I kind of did go over a bit, yes, sales do matter. And but that's kind of this this is kind of why Mega Man hasn't like gone super crazy. Like or like other we haven't seen another Mega Man game. One million seems impressive, but then when your other games are doing tens of millions per copy, yeah, they're def like a million does sound nice, but when compared to those numbers, that's when it's like, do we really truly want to uh uh, do we truly, truly want to go Mega Man when you have Resident Evil that did over 10 million sales units? Same with Lost Honor. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. And then, yeah, you have those games that didn't even reach the million dollar, the, the million unit mark. They're fucked beyond belief. At the very, at the very least, Mega Man isn't kicked off the table it's just sitting like at the far end at the table whereas monster hunter and resident evil are sitting at the front next to daddy capcom number two listen for many if not all these series it had been a decade or more but it does matter i should definitely say that should definitely preface it does matter like i'm not, I'm not saying that it doesn't but it does but do understand that is why like we're not seeing it as much so uh it, it, it truly does become looking at the glass half full half empty type of philosophy so yeah since we saw a new release for them a lot can change in that time including there being a whole new generation of kids and adults that don't know what Mega Man is thanks to its relative absence that being the case it's a prime opportunity to reintroduce the Blue Bomber to the world and catch everyone up on the past before they even think about sequels. After all, we know that you can pretty much play the side scrollers in any order you want, but for anyone who knows literally nothing about Mega Man, they'll look at that 11 in the title and be like, oh, that's a lot of games. Do I need to play the other ones first? Of course, this whole idea of catching everybody up hitches on Capcom doing something to capitalize on the renewed interest. The thing with games receiving an end, uh, sure, the games received an end, but that doesn't that that doesn't necessarily mean that they could have done more with it. Like, look at Zero. Sure, Zero finished, but then they they try to go with ZX ZXA, right? So the formula, the, 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 the thing for Zero, the, the spirit of Zero was still there, but unfortunately it just was not enough. And like I said, I, I, the solution to those games is you create a tournament. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but the collections and even the proposed remakes, while not something hardcore fans want right now, aren't inherently a bad idea from a business perspective. I have already seen firsthand how these releases have become a gateway for new people to get into the franchise. I'm or just try games that they guys haven't. all of that. All of that. All of that. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. What the fuck? No excuse. Um Oh, yeah, absolutely like mer merchandise one billion percent helps absolutely it's not even funny yes it does get old because it's like well gee thanks for the next figure bro like what the fuck man like a uh, thanks like i i get it like you definitely want more than just a figure or keychain but at the very same time, they are just as important. And all I'm saying, Capcom, listen to me, Capcom, all I'm saying, 
a layer body pillow. I'm there. Arado. Played before when they may not have otherwise. I mean, hey Capcom, if you want to use X Dive to renew interest in Mega Man X Command Mission so much, actually releasing it on anything other than the PlayStation 2 and GameCube might help more people actually play it. I've seen parents introducing their kids to Mega Man for the first time thanks to Eleven and the collections, and it's pretty wholesome. Maybe little. Can you imagine? As a young child being told, son, do you want a new bike? You have to beat Mega Man Classic in order to get this new bicycle. If you don't beat Mega Man Classic, you will not be getting this bicycle. <laughs> That's funny. By little then, we can combat the meme about people in this fandom stating their opinions as fact without having played the games they're talking about. Why doesn't Capcom hire anti creates to make games anymore? What happened between them? Okay, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I'm gonna be absolutely honest with you. I did not know this about anti creates It was kind of insane. Also, yes. Rest in peace, my guy. I'm adding this bonus question because it is something I get asked kinda often. The final game Capcom and Inti Creates ever worked on together was Mega Man 10 and the Mega Man Zero collection on Nintendo DS. While Keiji Inafune was still at Capcom. Then, of course, Inafune left and started his own company, Comcept. Later, he introduced the infamous Mighty No. 9 Kickstarter which Inti was brought on as the developer for. Inti and Inafune have been- Man. Nah, I'm gonna be real, like, the game is very mediocre. Let's, let's not kid ourselves, right? All memes aside, no jokes, no nothing. Game was all right. It could have been so much better. I don't, I don't even say better. I would, I would probably say like, it would have had such a better reception if that, if all that drama with the Kickstarter didn't happen, man. Like, holy moly. The PR that 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 series went through is insane. Oh my god. I will say though, it was probably the best roller coaster I've ever been a part of for twenty dollars. It was fantastic. But I would never do it again. Ever. I've <laughs> been working together ever since. Most recently bringing the man back to help with Azure Striker Gunvolt 3. Their relationship on display started the whole school of thoughts that, hey, Capcom hates Inafune, therefore they must hold a grudge against Inti Creates 2 for daring to work with him. I don't know if there is any way to prove or disprove that, but I'll be honest, I never got the vibe that there is bad blood between them, or at the very least, hate is a strong word to describe it. I remember when Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 was being shown on the E3 show floor, and Inti Creates devs were spotted chatting it up with Capcom reps next to the demo station. And literally every time Inti's PR people get asked about Mega Man, heck, whenever I interviewed Inti Creates, their answer is always the same. That Mega Man belongs to Capcom, and if they ever approached them to work on a new game, they would seriously consider it. Well, probably more like say yes in a heartbeat. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let this part play a bit afterwards, but I, I do want to talk a little bit. So, do companies hold grudges after against each other? I think only if it was that bad. Like if if you did something so drastically horrible, then probably yeah. But otherwise, I think at that point it'd be like it was it was business. Like it wasn't like necessarily. Uh, like, it was a business decision. It wasn't, like, a personal decision, if that makes any sense. Um, but, yeah, so before he goes into what he's going to say, um, me, personally, I never thought of, oh, Capcom was upset at Inti Creates um, for going with uh, Afune. I personally thought it was more so Inti Creates... Like, besides working with Capcom, also liked working with Inafune. So that's why 
they went with Inafune for Mighty Number no. Nine. I saw it more as a. It was like, kind of loyalty, kind of, sort of, but it was like, you know, they respected each other well enough to want to work with each other again. I, I, I truly don't. I did not believe that it was like, oh. Yeah, Capcom's angry because uh, Inti in creates one with Inafune, but then uh, he actually goes over something I I didn't even know about, and it kind of now makes a bit more sense. Since all the Mega Man callbacks in their game scream, "Take us back, please!" Even the recent untitled projects that they teased with a screenshot a bit ago uses a similar grid battlefield to that of Battle Network, except on closer inspection, it looks more like a traditional turn-based card game than purely Battle Network. Yeah, I, I think, I think, guys, uh, they like a very particular, uh, uh, franchise. I think. Possible. The, the very... The very uneducated guess. We'll have to see. Work. Anyway, at least we know that if there is bad blood, the aggressor isn't anti creates. So what the heck happened to their partnership anyway? Well, there is one theory. Recently, the Hidden Palace community shared a number of Xbox 360 prototypes, and among them was Mega Man 10. Upon closer inspection, it was discovered that Mega Man 10 at one time was going to include an assist co-op mode, where two players could play as Mega Man, Proto Man, or likely base on one screen. You know, that makes so much sense because Mega Man and Proto Man were working together throughout the entire storyline. Oh yeah, it's all clicking together now. This mode was set to support online functionality as well, where players could exchange ID cards that they could customize with different sprites. As for the gameplay, there are some obstacles seemingly unique to the mode and at certain points, players would have to sync up to unleash a supercharged buster shot. There was also a mechanic known as Pick Up Standby, where the players could stop following objects and ceilings. Answering the question, do they even lift bro? You could even pick up your partner and throw him around for some Super Mario multiplayer style chaos. That's funny. The community is still trying to figure out if we can get assist co-op working in the prototype, but while we wait, where am I going with this again? When Proto Dude of Rockman Corner initially broke the news, Midori from Mega Man 2 in a Day, and I believe a former The Mega Man Network contributor from back in the day, had an interesting rumor to share. The fact this didn't get implemented is why Capcom stopped working with Inti Creates. Capcom stopped working with Inti. Zero Collection still came out on DS, but that was already in dev anyway. What I'd heard back in the day, Inti was interested in doing co-op, Capcom was like, cool, we'll help. Then Inti was like, no, we got this. And then, they didn't got it. I don't know the specifics, but Inti dropped the ball on it real hard, and it did not sit well with Capcom. And ProtoDude added that this does align a bit with Mega Man Universe's network features. They didn't even approach Inti for help. So to sum it up, Inti apparently dropped the ball on- It is a theory. We, we we will never know the absolute answer. I think he's going to go over this afterwards. So I'm not going to comment just yet. I'm going to let the video play because the segment's almost done anyways. So we will, uh, we will, I'll let it play. On the online functionality for Mega Man 10, even though it was their idea and the feature had to be cut, leading Capcom to cease working with them because of their incompetence. Honestly, if this is true, it would explain a lot. I could tell that online was never into strong suit, given that Mighty Number no. 9 ended up getting delayed multiple times. The last delay specifically because they were working from an outdated engine and couldn't get the online mode to work in time. And you know what? Release day came and the online mode was still unplayable because whoever was the client got an unbearable amount of input lag. Almost felt like a waste of time back then, like they should have just focused on the single player where it really mattered. Oh well, so what do you guys think? Yeah, so it is 100% a theory. There, there is no, 
hard proof. We can only theorize. But knowing how awfully bad uh, Mighty Number no. Nine's netcode was, yeah, I I actually believe it. I truly do believe that's what it was. It's uh, it's yeah, like that is a giant fumble in that in that case. And at that point, I don't blame Capcom for not wanting to reach out to them. Although I kind of feel like, I mean, I would probably be like, ah, we can probably give them another shot. Like, hopefully they learn from their mistake. Or, or even better, just like, don't, don't depend on them for the online. If anything, we do it ourselves or we work together. But yeah, so I do believe this theory. I, I do whole, wholeheartedly believe that, that that is why they just haven't been together. They definitely fumbled the ball, and then because of the fumbling, Capcom's like, nah, son, no, 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 you're out. And yeah, so will that ever change? I don't know, but um, for sure. Well, no shit, Neeps. It's, it's, it's called a theory? Hello? That's all we have. We have crumbs. And no, I I, I I do not believe that Capcom stopped working for uh or Capcom uh no longer worked with in uh with uh integrates because of because of them working with Infinite. That that I don't believe that's the case at all. It could be. That 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 could be uh the reason why. We just won't never know. But considering um, the the netcode, I find that to be much more plausible than, say, working with uh, an, another person. Plausible theory? For now, let's move on. Hey man, we showed up with our wallets. We supported all the releases and the franchise is selling better than ever. What could possibly be taking them so long to make new games? Believe me, I hear you loud and clear. I too thought there would be something to show for all of the support by now, and that's the frustrating part. So here's my theory about what is going on. People will say that at this time, the COVID excuse no longer flies, but is that really the case? Even though society has returned to a somewhat normal state, the onus is still out there, game devs are still working remotely, and the eternal release schedules are still feeling the effects of the pandemic even today. I do not believe that Kazuhiro Tsuchiya was lying when he talked about a 10 year plan for the Mega Man franchise and told us that the next game had already been decided and entered pre-production in 2019. I truly believe that COVID hit Capcom and the Mega Man team in particular really hard in 2020. And here are my receipts. 2021 marked the 20th anniversary of the Mega Man Boundaryworks series and a lot of folks were clamoring for a legacy collection or some other acknowledgement from Capcom to celebrate. Well, there were a few things, but overall the anniversary turned out to be kind of a nothing burger. But we did get an acknowledgement from Capcom Unity's Ochi-san, where he had this to say. If the world hadn't been in this situation, if the world hadn't been in such a state, I might have had other plans to announce. But for now, I think it's time to be patient. Of course, washing hands, gargling, and social distancing are important too. It's always Rockman who beats the virus after all. In 2023, after the Legacy Collection finally came to fruition and was released, director Masakazu Iguchi confirmed that development had begun, quote, about two years ago, which would align perfectly with the timing of the 20th... Yeah, so I mean, I I can just tell you outright. I I, I I'm, I'm not speaking on like Capcom's behalf or anything, but I can tell you uh, personally, just like with just my own job in general, we're still feeling the effects of COVID. Like we we are for the like ninety percent like fully back to where, where we were before COVID, but we still got people. We still got people. Um, you know. Uh 
excuse me, we, we have people still working remotely from home. Uh, that's still a thing that people offer to this day. And like, we, we are definitely feeling the, the repercussions of what happened with COVID. So, and, and then obviously not every uh, business operates in the same uh, pace. So it could very well be that um, it could also very well be that, hey, uh, it's going to take us a bit longer. And then if I had a guess with Capcom as well, uh, when it comes to, you know, the they have they, they have all these IPs and, and things and whatnot, they want to prioritize on the big stuff, right? And unfortunately, Mega Man was, they wanted to work on Mega Man like crazy, but it wasn't that priority, so uh it kind of just took the back burner because they would they rather concentrate on the others with how limited they were and they're still feeling those effects this very day so yeah i i capcom i'm sorry uh covid to this very day is still uh, a thing and we should be get, like fully back to normal in due time but i legitimately cannot give an accurate number if that makes any sense so i mean all I can really say is, yeah, we're still kind of feeling it. And it's still kind of th a thing to this day. Hell, they even just told us uh, some new information about, like, uh, you no longer have to um, quarantine yourself for, like, five days or so when you have it. You can just quarantine yourself for 24 hours. So we're, we're, it's getting better. But there's still things going on with COVID to this very day. So, um, and... Uh, he is an example of a toxic mega. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, that's almost undeniable. I hate to, I hate saying that about people. Uh, I, cause I, I, I'm, I definitely am the type of person who always believes in like, there's like a, the, in the benefit of the doubts, like, you know, um, I, I do believe that there's like some good to it or not, but yeah. Um, I, I do. It, it, it truly is the duality of Mega Man fans. It's nuts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let me... Uh, let me. And, and uh, actually, I'll, I'll say this before I truly pause it. The, it wouldn't be such a giant problem being a, a doom and gloom, or, or at least much more assertive with what you want from Capcom. Like, there are some, some legitimate things that he did say uh th that that i i do agree with but it it does fall under presentation and uh, um the way you conduct yourself like you're better you'll you'll have lots a lot more longevity and a better better time uh you know being like i mean you don't have to be like super overly nice but you know be respectful be uh understanding and like just like don't always like doubt, you know. Uh, but absolutely, yeah. Like, um, like me personally speaking, I have never interacted with him like one on one. I've never spoken to him. I've never um, said much of anything. But yeah, I, I, I can, I can say, yeah. There's not. Uh, I can't really say much good, to be perfectly honest with you. But again, I've never personally experienced anything, so I can only go by the words from others, and then some. ...anniversary and Uchi-san's statement. This two-year gap hasn't come up just with the BNLC, but with other recent Capcom titles as well. And we know this because of the unfortunate ransomware attack on Capcom in 2020. When a lot of data, including their entire... Also, I should still preface, I have no idea if he ever saw the video. I never bothered to ask. Nor I probably won't have asked, to be perfectly honest with you, because it's whatever. No, like, you know, being nice, being... I mean, that can be a factor as well, but, you know... Being nice, being naive to the point where you can be stepped on and taken advantage of, you know, that sort of fail. Her pre-COVID internal release schedule got leaked. Due to the sensitivity of where the data came from, I cannot show you anything from it, but I can talk about the highlights. Dragon's Dogma 2 is- And not even just like, I'm, I'm not even talking like, 
uh, the most uh, most persuasive. I know you're not either, Luj uh, Man, but I'm just to, to kind of like go over it. It's just a basic respect, you know. It's like, hey, how you doing? You know, like, uh, just like basic human decency. You know, not, nothing too grand. Like, I'm not gonna bow to you or anything like that. But you know, from person to person, you're a cool guy. Things like that. So not not, not like, oh, I'm gonna spin your shoes and shit like that. That's wrong is out next month but it was originally slated to release two years ago in quarter two of 2022 the apollo justice ace attorney trilogy just came out last month and hey I to earn respect you must give respect to be perfectly honest with you you can't expect everybody to respect you so you give them respect and give them a reason to respect you because unfortunately, not everybody lives the exact same way. I reviewed it too, but it too got its announcement delayed by two years. Also, I gotta get this. Monster God Hunter damn it! Wilds was supposed to be out quarter three, twenty twenty three, but it only just got oh, announced this game's at the so Game bad, for man. a twenty twenty five release. Other titles like Street Fighter VI were delayed about a year, and the list goes on with a number of titles from the league. And yeah, still they're still making mistakes to this very One day. Of those being Rockman Tyson, or some prefer Mega Man Match. All that's known about it is it would be multiplayer focused. Oh, that, that is true. Not not everybody. Uh, not everybody. Uh... Uh, it it is it can be hard to respect some people, but th th that's the thing though. If like, if, if if a person's not willing to even give the most basic respect, then yeah, they're just not even worth your time. Which in that case, just ignore them at that point. Like, don't even don't interact with them at all. That's how I see it at least. Guest with post-launch DLC being planned, possibly a 3D action title. Most interestingly, it had the largest budget of any Mega Man title being comparable to the budget of Monster Hunter Stories 2. And it was predicted to sell 2 million copies over the course of 3 years, which would be a Mega Man first. Rockman Tyson was slated for a quarter 3 2022 release, but so far, no official announcements for it. I've heard things over the years like it's in dev hell, or one reason it's taking so long after Mega Man 11 to come out is because they switched from Mega Man 11's old MT framework engine over to the current RE engine, and thus they have to take time to build assets from scratch. But anyway, there was another interview with Kazuhiro Tsuchiya when he talked about another game idea that was conceived before Mega Man 11. However, he would not reveal any details because he fully intended to make this game someday. I do have to wonder if Tyson was going to be that pet project of his, but then COVID ruined the whole plan's timeline. The thing is, the Eternal Mega Man staff is incredibly small. During the yeah, man. to empty crates a lot. But nowadays, after Legacy Collection 1 was outsourced to Digital Eclipse, Capcom has chosen to do everything in-house from that point forward. So they only have Capcom Taiwan for X Dive, another team in Japan helping with Dive, and then presumably one internal team for the collections, and another for the next mainline title. But this is just speculation based on my observations. Still, like I said, the teams are rather small, and especially when the pandemic hit, members had to be shuffled around to meet development deadlines. The biggest example was Tsuchiya being pulled to help with Street Fighter VI. And yeah, that would end up being his final release before departing the company. So what will become of Rockman Tyson now? Are they still working on it? Has it been cancelled? Well, if we keep going by the theme of two year delays, technically we still have until the end of 2024 as a likely time to see an announcement. If nothing happens by then, now we can pull out the torches and pitchforks. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Unless... But yeah, it's like, hmm. Yeah. I mean, me personally speaking, I am not even really, uh, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't have Mega Man Tyson in, in, in my equation. I'm just like, 
whatever comes out comes out even if it ends up being tyson or just something completely different i'm just i'm just waiting for it i'm i'm not i'm not even holding my breath i'm i'm just not and that was the one thing i did here like it, it was like the bold statement that this this was going to make all mega man all, all mega man fans happy so that actually does um absolutely interest me to this very day but because to me it's like i'll believe it when i see it type deal because it's like do you know like i mean i know they know but it's like do you know how diverse your your fan base is because i guarantee you it's like uh it's quite different <laughs> but yeah um just play other games to waste of time until something feasible comes out yeah you know we can play you can play gravity circuit and lunar lux baby final question is the franchise dead again without Kazuhiro Tsuchiya? That is a tough one to answer because it depends on the situation on the inside, which we got no knowledge of. It's been said prior when KJ Inafune departed that the Mega Man devs that remained were left with no leadership or vision on how to proceed. I can only hope it's not that bad this time, and Tsuchiya was able to find a successor before he left, but who knows. Prime candidates for a successor could be Masakasu Iguchi or my favorite pick, Mega Man 11 director Koji Oda. Remember, it wasn't even Tsuchiya that I believe. was working on Mega I Man. I believe games. in the Oda sweep. It was Koji Oda knocking down the man's door trying to get answers that truly got things rolling. We need more guys like him that can take the initiative within the company if we want to see Mega Man continue on. I will say that thing that kind of scares me about Oda, and it's not even necessarily Oda himself that's the issue. It's more so that guy looks old. What are the chances he's going to retire? I mean, I know, like, uh, th that's not saying he's going to at any time, but generally when you're older, uh, the, the question of retirement does pop up, and sometimes depending on who the person is, they might just want to keep going, or there's like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to retire, and then that's that. So, that that is a thing to consider. Um, let me look at a, uh, just to, yeah, you can kind of, be, you can kind of say kind of the same as well, kind of, just going by appearance. I'm not entirely sure how old he is. You might have to look up the, the wiki for that, but, yeah, generally the older audio, like the older devs, they're probably like, hmm, maybe it's that time. But I do know that uh, at the very least, uh, uh, the work culture in uh, Japan is like vastly different compared to American. So maybe, I mean, it could be like a Sakurai where he just works till his deathbed. Well, I don't, I don't know. So we'll we'll have to see about that. But. Um, yeah, uh, I I definitely agree. Either Gucci or Oda, uh, I'm down for both. If if should it happen, but at this very point, I'm just not gonna be. Uh, um, it's um like I'm just I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna ride the waves and see what what flows. Let's go a little bit forward. I think. Uh, that's it. Let's, let's go a little back. We'll play it here. Play the fucking bit! Suchi is rule, so I do not think Capcom is not going to rest on their laurels this time. They know people want more, it's just a matter of priorities and time. And maybe that's why they're putting out so many dang surveys lately, because they're truly trying to figure out what to do next. Yeah, I don't know what the future holds at this point. A Star Force or a Legends Legacy Collection? Rockman Tyson? Remakes? Mega Man X Type 2? Are they going to look at that Battle Network sweep and make a new Battle Network game? Hard to say, but hopefully we won't have to wait much longer for them to show what they've been cooking. I am going to make a prediction and people are going to hate me for it, especially the X9 fanboys, but I think Mega Man 12 will come out before any other sequel. We I fully agree. Got 11 to build off from. Wily hints at a sequel at the end of 11, saying that he will always come back. Plus, it would give them a chance to address the criticisms people had about 11 and expand on the base of what they got, especially if they want to experiment with the RE engine. But hey, I would love to be wrong. They got quite a few.
Yeah, so, okay, 45. That's still up there, but these got ways to go, so possibly. Um, but yeah, for sh- absolutely for sure. Uh, classic. If, 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 if anything's going to get a sequel, it's probably classic. Definitely for sure. Um, although, the Legacy Collections for Battle Network sort of throws a wrench into it, so maybe they might want to do something with that. Possibly. Possibly. I cannot say for sure, but literally, it always, it always, like, um, it always is, like, a, a thing that's to be, uh, factored in. We don't know. Cliffhangers to solve, so I only hope that they do get resolved one day. I'll end off with one last thought. Remember when I pointed out that Mega Man has 169 titles? Yeah, that's a lot, and you know, I sincerely doubt everybody here has played them all. Heck, there are still a few obscure titles here and there even I haven't touched yet. I understand everyone has their own ideal version of Mega Man. However, while we are still waiting for the next big thing, why not take an open-minded approach and try out those other series, spin-offs, or obscure titles go. released throughout the years? Don't forget that the fan game, modding, and preservation communities are always pumping out new content for us to enjoy so that there is never a shortage, even when Capcom lets us down. There's certainly no shortage of inspired indie games BY GRAVITY CIRCUIT is out there to try too. Some of those even coming from former Mega Man developer Inti creates. Give them all a try. Who knows? You might find a treasure among the pile, or discover that one game that everyone says sucks doesn't suck so much after all. Well, everybody. Also, you can tell Quentin entered this video because the Guardian Circle was out there for quite some time. I would like to thank you all for coming to my TED Talk and hearing me out if you made it this far. I do want to. Also, base take on Star Force 2. Stress again that this is all my own educated guesses. I don't want to be like, everything I say is absolute and you are dumb if you disagree. It's not like that at all. You're free to come to your own conclusions from here, and hey, if I got something wrong, let me know. After all, we're all still learning on this journey. As for me, after this, it's back to Mega News proper, which may be either a bi-weekly or a monthly series for now, depending on the time I get to work on these. And I got a lot of catching up with live streaming content to do too, Oh boy. In addition, I have a couple more early reviews lined up in the near future, so definitely stay tuned to Shadowrox ZX for all things Mega Man and other things like I just mentioned. Until then, rock on and have yourselves a great time zone. Yeah, that's me. But yeah, uh, well, one dive gave us that, so. <laughs> but yeah, like overall, I, I, for the most part, agree with the video, like. Uh, I don't think there's anything I can truly say that I, f- like, fully disagree with. Like, our thoughts are, like, quite the same, really. Um, but yeah, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Although, I think the only, the only, the only thing that I would probably, like, I, I don't even want to say disagree, uh, but, um, it's more so, he's probably more on the path of hoping for Mega Man. I'm definitely on the path of go by Gravity Circuit. Lunar Locks, aka get the spiritual successors. To answer your questions, yes, I'm, I'm going to be uploading this as a separate video. It'll probably be up either tomorrow or Monday, probably. Uh, but I'll, I'm I'm definitely going to up- upload this separately, and then that way uh, you guys can watch it whenever you wish. Um, but over, yeah, overall, I I for, for I fully agree with the video. Like, there's like very little I disagree with. Um, in this, in this whole thing, and this kind of was a video that people needed, right? Like, I'm not even, I'm not even joking. Like, this is like, uh, this is 100 percent uh the video, uh, that you wanna um definitely try. Um, Gravity Circuit, I believe, is on the Switch. Uh, somebody confirm with me just in case, but I'm pretty sure Gravity Circuit is on the Switch. Probably. I know they have like, I, I think they have like one of those limited run physical versions i'm not sure if there's a digital version but yeah definitely for sure it's on the switch in some way shape or form so you can definitely play it uh it, it's a, it's such it's such a good game dude it is such a good game 
Oh, Nape's already played Guardian Circuit. I, <laughs> I I streamed it like a little bit ago. Uh, it was a great game. I uh, loved it all the way. Um, and, and it's funny too because like Gravity Circuit was like the Mega Man X Mega Man Zero game that Mega Man Zero wanted to be, and it just like it it captured it flawlessly. Like one of the biggest reasons for um. One of the biggest reasons why I couldn't really get into Zero or in ZX and things like that is because I just couldn't really fully resonate with its gameplay and, and like the way the game played. Like I understood that uh it was like it was definitely more for the hardcore gamers where uh it was like it was definitely much more challenging and much more harder and I don't I don't mind challenge and hardness, but then when you unlock like uh even though they're optional things, the fact that you unlock things behind like your performance Real, it's re it really puts me down. It's just like, I could get good, but why should I get good if you're just not even gonna uh, allow me to uh, fully enjoy the game? I would like, so, and then there's even some people where they would rather just enjoy the game casually, and Gravity Circuit captures that perfectly. It is that game where you can absolutely uh, play it casually. It ain't gonna kill you, and like you know, it's a like it's not a terribly hard game, but with Gravity Circuit, it, it's a it's a game it's a game that you like it's easy to play. Uh, what's the phrase? I forgot the phrase, but it's like, but it's like you can get into it easily, but it's definitely uh very it's it's for it's for both audiences. It's for both the casuals and the hardcore. You can. See Super go off and do the craziest shit of all time in that game and just completely break and show how insane the game is. And and yeah, uh it's it's, it's just a great game overall. You get to pet the, you get a you gotta pet a dog for God's sakes. Okay? Buy the game, damn it. Um Yeah, so uh uh I, I know three for sure, and I'm pretty sure two, but yeah, you uh abilities and whatnot. Where, uh, if you beat a boss, you had to be you had to be an S and A, A rank at least to to get the stuff. And if you are below that, you're done for. And the thing that really bothered me, I, I can only really speak about zero three because that's like the one I really played. Uh, four two, but that that's a bit different. But when it came to the grade, um, it's not even a fact like oh you get graded for that stage. Is that grade is carried to you through that the entire time so if at one point you so much as get your grade down to a b or below there's just no way you can get back up and that irked me to no end because it could be like oh uh i'm good in this stage but i'm not good in that stage and then if i get to that point where i have to beat the stage that i'm not uh stuck there like that i'm not good at then i'm going to suffer unfortunately and that and it's like, oh, I'm I'm going to outright miss out. And at that point, it truly it does become uh get good or lose out. And that definitely sucks. Especially for a series that you need people to buy your shit. <laughs> uh but yeah. Um oh yeah, Pizza Tower, I need to get that at some point. That's definitely another one of those games that are just like, oh, it's a pretty good game, bro. I gotta get on that. Um I should I should be shilling that game too. It looks so good. Uh, like here's the thing too. I don't even watch Pizza Tower videos per se, but I get recommended. Um, I get recommended like these mods for Pizza Tower, and it's like uh, Pizza Pizza Man has like a fucking daughter and shit like that. And there's like there's like oh, there's like a bunch of fucking bots for this game. It's like, all right. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, um I, I, I also hope for the best for the gravity circuit devs. Hell actually they even um fucking they they actually had like a pretty significant update. Uh I played a little bit uh offline, but they essentially added like palette chips and things like that. So you can just like change the color and they all have abilities pertaining to the to the uh to the robot master and then like uh, like, they, they even have one where, oh, you can, like, have all of it in one, which I found to be pretty 
fucking cool. Um, will I play Pizza Tower? I will at some point. I just don't know when. Uh, Berserk Boy is one I'm I'm looking at as well. Um, oh yeah, let me even show you. Like this is the video. Uh, this is the remix that I found from Dominic Nimmark. Uh, yeah. So th th like literally, this is the remix base remix as well but um this is the remix that i saw i was like holy fucking shit guys uh actually videos that's better to do videos um right here this 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 is the one where it was just recommended to me out of the blue i heard it and i'm like oh shit oh god this guy's fucking great and then, like, and apparently this guy was in a fucking hiatus for some sh for, for some reason. And then, like, I, I look over and I'm like, oh, oh, what kind of other things do you do? And I'm like, uh, oh, I, I love the pictures too. It's like, oh, like he does some pretty cool stuff. Uh, what the fuck's this gravity circuit thing? I don't, I don't fucking know, dude. Like, it's like, okay, cool, I guess, whatever, right? And then, and then, like, uh, I think he, there were some posts and whatnot coming out. It's like. Okay, I guess you didn't put it. But um, I was like, oh, hey, guys. Uh, this is a cool game called Gravity Circuit that's coming out soon. Uh, you should probably play that. And I was like, oh. Well, this game's cool. <laughs> and yeah, so that's... Uh, yeah, that's, that's how I was introduced to this. I was literally introduced to this by pure accident. Kind of insane, if you think about it. Um, but we wouldn't if you haven't already, uh, absolutely listen to that guy's stuff. It's... it's phenomenal and he's the composer for gravity circuit so uh even more reasons to buy it uh i tried j-pop that's practically what i mostly listen to to be honest j-pop j-rock <laughs> um and a lot of uh video game OS, oh, uh osts and things like that gravity circuit theme tier list one i could do that i can do that Big to big, uh, hmm. I I don't I don't know if I could actually do like an I mean I probably can. But it's like hmm, like would there be like an audience for like an actual like tier list of like it's just, it's just the entire stream. That's all it is. It's just tier list. Um. So yeah. Um. I mean, I'll, I'll, if there's interest, I'll definitely do it. Uh, I I want to I want to do one for Bat for the Battle Eric series. Uh, like as soon as um. Uh, as soon as I'm done with the Battle Network series, uh, I'm going to do that, where I'm going to, like, grade each and every one of the Battle Networks, so that ought to be fun. I'm going to get people to hate me, but, uh... <laughs> but, yeah. Um, uh, the video is linked in the description, uh, of course. Uh, I would definitely give it a watch, give it a like, you know. Uh, guy worked hard on this video, so, uh, everyone deserves the, uh, their, their dues and whatnot. And, um, I even said the same thing for a replay video, video, like, you may or may not like it, but, uh, uh, yeah, you gotta be fair, you know, give the, give the guy, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's advertising and whatnot. And that's, like, the benefit for a premium, too, is, like, uh, I believe the creator gets more money if, uh, a user that watches you is a premium user, so. Um, uh, I know there's one thing that I want to do, uh, at this point, uh, we talked about it briefly, but... Oh, give me one moment, I'm getting a phone call. Okay, um... Coolio, um... I mean, if you want to share music, you can just share YouTube blank. You don't have to, like, send the actual mp3 file. <laughs> Um, but at this point, I'm going to, uh, 240 mark. I'm going to write that down. The video itself is done, so I'd like to thank you all for joining me for this wonderful reaction. Uh, overall, video's great. I truly do like it. Um...